चेक 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 स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू योर ओन चैनल विदांतु नीट इंग्लिश दिस बस फॉर आज योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एनीथिंग क्विकली लेट मी नो द कमेंट सेक्शन इफ माय वॉइस इज ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड द प्रेजेंटेशन बिहाइंड मी इज विजिबल टू ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू क्विकली टेल मी इन द चैट If I'm audible and visible to each and every one of you, good evening, good evening, good evening. How is everyone doing? How is the preparation going on? Tell me. How is the preparation going on? Check, check, check. Yes, we are live. Awesome. Yes, we are live. So, students, before I start, everyone hit the like button. I can see like buttons. Are, like is very low, so hit the like button right now. If I'm audible and visible. Hello, crazy. Hello, sweetie. How is the preparation going on? Tell me. How is your preparation coming along? Is it coming out good, or what is the level you're doing right now? Is it your is the preparation going on really strong that you have finished you have finished the all the chapters and you're only left with the revision? Hello, good evening, good evening, Shubhashini. Good evening, Dora. Yes. Hello, Rupa. Welcome to the class. How is the preparation going on? Tell me in the chat. How is the preparation going on? So, can I ask you a question, all of you? As usual, my class starts with a simple question. The simple question for today is. Mm, is the population related to a single species, or the population is in, uh, you know, represented by a group of species? Tell me. Yes, I know board exams are going on. The simple question is: Is the population, is the population related to a single species, or is the population related to many species? Dora, don't worry. We are here to help you. We will help you in every way possible. we will help you in every way possible don't worry as students this video is for all the students who are writing board examination and also neat examination ecology so that is the main reason i'll be doing ncert line by line recently i put a poll in my telegram channel saying that how, how do you want the session to be so 90% of you were like students were like sir can you please do line by line of ncert so that is what i'll be doing okay that is what i'll be doing no it is not a group of species population is always for a single species you say a population of a lion a population of humans a population of cat a population of a dog so population is always remember population is always for a single species so with that being said if you were able to answer that question hit the like button right now hit the like button right now if you are able to answer the question if not also you can hit the like button and we will start today's class students do not forget to share the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel that is the most important because students we are in the final stretch now right we have less than 55 days for your examination less than 50 i think less than that also so students this is the final stretch and you need to be very very strong right now so super 6 will go in like you know in a much more fast manner like you know final over when you say in your in your ipl or in cricket we have final over right so this is going to be the final over and we will be starting okay students this entire chapter if you look at the syllabus if you look at the syllabus of this particular chapter particular chapter one second here if you look at the chapter of this particular if you sub syllabus it says organism and environment that is one part organism and environment is one part of this chapter which gopika ma'am has already covered in a specific video so in today's session i will not be doing this organism and environment part but from the the rest of the part can you see population interaction mutualism commensalism predation population attributes growth birth rate death rate and age distribution all of these concept i'll be teaching in today's class okay so some of you have not watched the organism and environment part if you want the starting part which you need to study from your old ncert which you need to study from your old ncert you will have to study from your organism and environment okay but in today's class we'll be doing the rest of the part so students before we start today's class i want everyone to do three things what are three things first one every single one of you to keep your ncert next to you go fast run all of you run go and get your book first go and get your ncert first one second one get your pencil or a pen get a pencil mostly get a pencil so you can write some extra points in your ncert itself some extra points inside your ncert mark some points inside your ncert so get a pencil and the third one go get a all of you go get a water bottle so this because this is going to be a long session little because i'm going to be reading every line of ncert i want all of the students to read the ncert with me okay so all of you should read the ncert with me so can we start 
so with that being said that is the basic things which i want everyone to carry rest everyone will uh, rest we'll see in the uh, in the chapter okay so students this is a telegram channel you can join you should join the telegram channel because every single notes updates every single thing will be available on the telegram channel so can we start everyone ready is everyone ready i want some fire emoji or some hearts in the chat which will show me that you know students you are ready for today's class because it's going to be ncrt line by line okay i'm going to be reading every line of ncrt i want every one of you to read the lines with me and then understand the ncrt with me okay so can we start can we start yes students we can start the first line of ncrt here we go the first line of ncrt our living world is fascinatingly diverse and amazingly complex that is our earth our earth is very complex and very vast our living world is fascinatingly diverse that means we have various amount of flora and fauna fauna so when i say diverse it mainly uh, deals with the animals animals as well as animals one second what is happening second mm -hmm. yes it mainly deals with the animals and plants animals and plants wide variety wide diversity of plants and animals right and amazingly complex we can try to understand this complexity by investigating processes at various levels of biological organization that is if you want to understand the complexity we need to understand the different levels in the organism that is the first basic one is your macromolecules the first basic one is your macromolecules see write down students next year ncrt the first basic one is your macromolecules then after macromolecules what do we have cells then what do we have after cells we have the tissues we have the tissues then what do we have organ we have organ level organization then we have the individual organisms then we have individual organisms yes individual organisms individual organisms then we have population so till here till here every single thing is individual level right when you talk about macromolecules when you talk about cells when you talk about organs or organ systems till here everything is of individual level right after that we have the population after that we have the population now students i told you already population is again for a single species population is for again for a single species single species then what do we have communities ecosystems and biomes so after the after the after the population we have the communities we have the communities then we have ecosystem ecosystem and we also have the biomes we have the biomes now tell me in the chat is the communities for a single species or communities for many species so remember students population is for single species but community is for many species many species community is for many species now till here that is macromolecule cells tissues organs organ system and organism population and communities till here every single thing is biotic in nature yes it is biotic in nature but as soon as as soon as we enter the ecosystem as soon as we enter the ecosystem inside the ecosystem all of us know we have biotic as well as abiotic so from ecosystem onwards from ecosystem onwards one second from ecosystem onwards we have both biotic and abiotic biotic as well as abiotic is present in the ecosystem then we have biomes biomes are basically many clusters of different different ecosystems now can anyone tell me do we have something after the biomes also something greater than biomes it is not given here it is not given here do we have something greater than biomes the answer is yes that is biosphere biosphere is the largest ecosystem that is global level ecosystem okay at any level of biological organization at any level 
एट एनी लेवल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी कैन आस्क टू टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन वी कैन आस्क होमनी क्वेश्चन वी कैन हैव आस्क टू टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन वॉट आर दीज क्वेश्चन वॉट एंड वाई दट इज क्वेश्चन फॉर द फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन वी हियर द बुल बुल सिंगिंग अर्ली मॉर्निंग हियर आई डोंट सी इन बैंगलोर बट इन सम प्लेस वी माइट हियर बुल बुल सिंगिंग इन द मॉर्निंग वी कैन हैव टू क्वेश्चन वॉट आर टू क्वेश्चन how does the bird sing yes how does the bird sing obviously the bird has the spherings sphere, which is the voice box and the vibrating bones that's how it can sing but the second question the second question is why is it singing early morning i'm sleeping so peacefully one weird sound is coming in the morning to disturb me in the sleep but you always ask why is the even bird is singing in the morning the answer to that is in ecology we'll answer the answer to that question why is the bird singing why do we need why does the deer or why does the lion hunts on the deer why does why do we do this certain uh, certain behavioral patterns all of these behavioral patterns we will discuss in the ecology and the answer to the question here is it could be multiple reasons one such reason is that bulbul might be singing for the reproduction call you know frogs also do this right frogs will croak for the attracting the females that could be one of the reasons okay the how type question seeks the mechanic uh, mechanism behind the process that is the scientific one while we while the why type question seeks the significance of the process that is why why is the bulbul singing why is it singing it could be a much more behavioral pattern ecology for the first question in our example the answer might be in the terms of operation of the voice box i told you spherings operation of the voice box that is the and vibrating bones voice box and the vibrating bones in the bird whereas whereas for the second question what is the second question second question is why why is the bird singing that is the why is the bird singing that is uh, the answer may lie in the birds need to communicate with its mate during the breeding season that is it could be a mating call it could be a mating call so in any of the biological organization there are always two questions how and why what are the two questions students how is it happening and why is it happening it could be anything like a frog a frog have you seen this bladder kind of thing which pops up here yes how is it happening because of certain type of skin cells why is it happening for attraction now again a peacock a peacock is dancing right a peahen is a peahen is dancing why is a peahen is a peacock is dancing for it, it, it is able to dance because of the feathers but why is it dancing it is dancing to attract it is dancing to attract the mate yes for every single there is how and why that is the basics of your ecology okay you have already learned in the previous classes that ecology is a subject which studies the interactions among the organisms so what do we study in the in the lower classes you would have studied ecology is basically a subject where interaction among biotic and abiotic factors are happening right abiotic factors are happening biofactors are happening and between the organism and its physical abiotic environment ecology is basically concerned with four levels of biological organization so in ecology how many levels do we have students in ecology we have four levels of classification what are the four levels the first one is your organism what are the four levels the first one is your first one is your organisms the second one is the population the second one is your population the third one the third one is your communities the third one is your communities and the fourth one is the biomes these are the four levels these are the four main levels in which in which the particular ecology works okay so this is where the actual chapter chapter starts now so can we start the chapter now till here any doubt students you can ask me in the chat or you can ask me i'm looking in the chat constantly i'm looking in the chat constantly you can ask me any doubt till now the basics of ecology right the basics of ecology in ecology why is things are happening what are ha why is happening and how is it happening and what are the different organizations you need to know apart from that everything is easy okay any doubt here no doubt 
Students, I'll be looking. I'll be looking at the chat. Any time you have a doubt, you can uh, pop the doubt in the in the chat, and I will re I will read it eventually. Okay. Now let's start with the population attributes. Now let's start with the population attributes. Okay, students. So I want everyone to read with me. So when I'm reading, Shivani, so Sunita, Ravindrani, Rupa, all of you should read with me. Okay. In nature, we rarely find isolated single individuals of any species. Majority of them live in groups in a well-defined geographical area. Share, share or complete for they share or compete for similar resources, potentially interbreeding and thus constitute and thus constitute a population. Now, what is the meaning of this first paragraph here? The meaning of the first paragraph here is that in the nature, yes, in the nature, every single organism it will never stay alone right now also if you look around your house you will have other organisms i'm not talking about a ghost i'm not writing scare you you are not alone in your room if you look around your room closely there will be some ants in the corner there will be one spider yes in the on the floor there in the ground in the behind the under the bed there might be a cockroach right so you are also not alone you are also not alone in the house so just like how you are not alone every single organism every single organism will always be in a group will always be in a group except few examples exceptions are there okay now although the term interbreeding implies sexual reproduction of group of individuals resulting from even sexual reproduction this there is so much of glare i'm not able to read this thing i'll stand this side bit I'll send this side. This is easier. Although the term interbreeding implies sexual reproduction of a group of individuals resulting from even group of individuals, group of individuals resulting from even a sexual reproduction is also generally considered for a population of purpose of ecological studies. So when we when you say a particular organism is staying together for interbreeding, it usually means sexual reproduction. But in the case of ecology, we also include a uh, sexual reproduction. Both are included for ecological studies, right? Ecological studies. All the components in wetland, oh sorry, all the, oh, so much of glare. All the comrades, this is the type of bird. Comrades in a wetland, rats in the abandoned dwelling, tea, uh, demand dwellings, teakwood, trees in the forest, Track bacteria in the culture plate and lotus plant in a pond are some of the examples of population. So all of these different organisms, all of them stay together in a group. All of them stay together in a group. In earlier chapter, you have in earlier chapter you have learned that although an individual organism is one that has to cope with the changed environment. What are they talking here? They're basically telling you about the adaptations. We learned, right? In organism and environment, you might have learned about the kangaroo rat. What is the kangaroo rat? Kangaroo rat basically does beta oxidation, which will, which will produce the metabolic water. Then we have cactus. Cactus will have, you know, phylloclad, that is photosynthetic stem. There are some leaves in the desert which will show, which will show cuticle layer to reduce the transpiration. Yes, we also learned about blabber. Blabber is a type of tissue which is found in the seals, which will trap the heat. Yes, remember all those examples. If you don't remember those examples, please learn those examples. Those are the examples that are very important. Different types of adaptations. Okay, it is, it is at the population level that natural selection operates. Very important line. All of you mark it in your book. All of you mark it in your book that it is, it is, at the population level it is at the population level that natural selection operates to evolve the desired traits so natural selection this is your evolution question also natural selection operates at population level okay at population level important mark this this can come as the direct question this can come as a direct question hidden line of ncrt Population ecology. So again, they are telling you about population ecology now. Population ecology has three main points again. Population ecology is therefore an important area because it links ecology plus population and genetics, population genetics 
as well as evolution. So the three components of your ecology are three points. Population ecology has three points. That is ecology, ecology. Then we have population genetics as well as evolution. Three parts of population ecology. Let me write down. Population ecology has three parts. Population ecology has three main factors, three main parts. The first one is your ecology. Second one is your population genetics. Population genetics. And the third one is evolution. The third one is evolution. Three different parts of the population ecology. Okay. Now, a population has certain attributes. Yes, a population will have certain attributes, means certain characteristics. Let's read the characteristics now. A population has certain attributes, whereas an individual organism does not. This is a one line, simple line. You might be thinking, sir, is this line even important? The answer is yes. This right here is a previous year neat question. Here, I'll write down. This is your previous year neat question. Need PYQ. Can you see? Just from one line, that is, a population will have certain type of attributes, an individual organism will not have the attributes. Clear? An individual may have birth and death, but a population has birth rate and death rate. Very important. For example, I will die. You will die. All of us will die. Some organisms or some humans are, some human is being born. That individual level. But at a population level, at population level, we have something called as birth rate and death rate at population level. Okay. In a population, these rate refer to per capita. That is increase or decrease with respect to per capita, birth and death. Now, what is the meaning of per capita? The meaning of per capita is per thousand, per thousand. Okay, the rate uh, per capita, the rate hence express the change in the number of with respect to the members of the population. So, what is per capita? The per capita of birth and death expresses change in the population. Per capita birth is number of individuals added to the population. Per capita death is number of individuals removed from a population. Okay, hence, hence in a, I'm giving you an example here. Hence in a, in a pond, there were 20 lotus. Listen to this very carefully. Need PYQ again. Need PYQ. In a pond. In a pond. Per thousand. In a pond. Listen to me very carefully now. Very important line. You need PYQ. In a pond, there were 20 lotus plants last year. So, last year. Last year, there were how many? How many? 20 plants were there. 20 lotus plants were there last year. Last year, 20 lotus plants. Okay. And through reproduction, 8 new plants are added. So, how many are added new? New added is how many? New added is 8. New added is 8. Taking the current population to 28. So, to our current population is 28 now. 28. We calculate the birth rate as. So, there is a... We have to calculate what? We have to calculate the birth rate. Now, what is the birth rate? Birth rate here is the newly added. The birth rate is what? Birth rate is formula is newly added divided by initial population. This is a neat 2023 question. Neat 2023 question. Right? I'll show you the question also. So, newly added is how much? Newly added is your 8 newly added is your 8 divided by what is the initial population initial population is 20 here so 8 divided by 20 which will approximately give you 0 0.4 approximately give you 0 0.4 that is the birth rate that is the birth rate here okay birth rate that is 0 0.4 of springs per lotus per year okay if four individuals in a next next one this is the next example from here we have a next example also what is the next example? If four individuals in a laboratory population of 40 fruit flies died. So, in a, within, a, within a population, 40 fruit flies are dying. 40 fruit flies are dead during a specified time interval. 
say a week so within a week within a week 40 fruit flies have died that is drosophila melanogaster okay week the death rate in the po poor individuals have a population of 40 fruit flies right oh no 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 I, this is so blurry not able to see if four four individuals in a laboratory population of 40 fruit flies are died okay, okay not 40 have not died four have died out of 40 okay four have died out of 40 if four individuals in a laboratory of population of 40 fruit flies have died during a specified time interval say a week the death rate of the population that period will be now what will be the death rate the death rate death rate is going to be how many fruit flies have died divided by initial population initial population so how many have died how many have died four have died so it's going to be four divided by initial population is 40 so death rate is what death rate is 0 0.1 0 0.1 is the death rate that is death rate of fruit flies per week okay death rate for four, that is death rate here is 0 0.1 death rate is here 0 0.1 did everyone understand this question? Did everyone understand any doubt here? Any doubt here? Ask me right now. Sir, how asexual, uh, asexual reproduction happens in a population that is, there are many asexual factors also. That, that, that is, um, let me think. That is within a population. They, they are talking about within a population now. Okay. That is, for example, a particular fungus is undergoing a sexual reproduction. That will be that spore formation. That will be included in the that will be included in the population attributes during ecology. If no doubt here, can you solve some question? Can you solve this question? There are two fifty snails. This is need twenty twenty three question. If there are two fifty snails in a pond and within a year their number increased to two thousand five hundred right by reproduction what should be the birth rate per snail what should be the birth rate easy question easy question right can anyone answer easy question right a sexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which only a single parent is involved and there is no exchange of genetic material no variation and the offspring is genetically and morphologically unique what is the answer here? Tell me anyone. I'll give you 10 seconds. I'll give you 10 seconds to answer this question. What is the final now? There are 250 snails in a pond and within a year, their number increased to 2000. See, initially there were 250. Yes. Initially there were 250 snails. Within a, within a year, they became 2000. 500 from 250 they became 2500 from 250 they became 2500 now tell me what is the new number of snails there what is the new number of snails tell me what is the new number of snails how do you find that 2500 minus 250 that is what is it that is your 2000 250. 2250, 2250 are the new snails. 2250 are the new snails. New snail. Right. Now, what is the formula for birth rate? The formula for birth rate is new snails divided by the initial snails. What are the new snails here? New snails are nothing but your 2250 divided by the initial snails. Initial snails was 250. 0, 0, gone. And if you divide, you will approximately get 9. So, what is the answer? The answer is 9 is there. Huh. That is option number 2. Option number 2. Clear? Clear? So, you have to find the initial snail first. How do you find initial, sna initial snails? That is 2500 minus 250. That will give us around 2250, which is the new snails. The formula. The formula is what? The formula is newly added divided by initial population. What is the newly added? Newly added is 2250 divided by the initial it is 250 will approximately get 9. Clear? Clear? Easy question. Right? Now.
नेक्स्ट अ पॉपुलेशन एट अ गिवन टाइम अ पॉपुलेशन एट एट एनी गिवन टाइम इज कंपोज ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ डिफरेंट एजेस ट्रू ट्रू राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल I am teaching here, and you are also learning here. Now tell me, what is our? Uh, we are a population right now. Yes, we are a population right now. All of you might be. Uh, I'll I'll probably be around seven to seven years elder than you, right? I'm. I'll be almost. I'll be almost seven years elder than you. So you are almost like you'll be in seventeen years, eighteen years, or nineteen years. You'll all of be, or some of them will be twenty years. Uh, some of you will be twenty years. I am also. Around five to six years older than you, so a population will have age groups from many different categories. That is the line here. If the age distribution per se, per person individuals of a given age or age group is plotted, that is the age distribution. The age distribution is plotted in a graphical representation that is called as age pyramid. So what is age pyramid? If the age distribution Where is the bracket opening? Where is it closing? I'm not understanding. Mm. If the age distribution of age distribution is plotted for a population, the resulting structure is called as age pyramid. So when you uh, when you uh, make when you make a diagram out of the different age groups or the age distribution, we get a pyramid. We get a we get a structure. Okay. Now for human population. For human population, the age pyramid generally shows distribution of males and females in a diagram. So, in this particular diagram, we are showing distribution of male and female. The shape of the pyramid reflects the growth sta status of the population. Now, quickly tell me what is this shape now? What is this shape? Mm, which color? Green. What is the shape? What is this shape? Tell me. What is this shape? Is it circle? Is it triangle? Is it rectangle? Is it triangle? Or is it pyramid shape? This is your pyramid shape. Pyramid shape. Now, what is this shape? What is this shape? Can anyone tell me? What is this shape? What does it look like? This is your bell shape. Now, what is this? What is this shape? This is your urn shape. This is your urn shape. Now, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. The first one, the first one is expanding. The first one is called as expanding type of structure, expanding or pyramid structure. Expanding or expanding pyramid. That is whether it is growing. The first one is the expanding one. or also called as the growing one now if you look closely if you look very closely in your pyramid or expanding one in your pyramid or or the expanding one can you see here pre reproductive pre reproductive is number is greater than the reproductive and reproductive is greater than the post reproductive if you look closely if you look closely in the expanding one pre reproductive is greater than the reproductive and the reproductive number of reproductive is again greater than the post reproductive let me change the color greater than the post reproductive now this type of pyramid where do you see this type of pyramid can be seen in which countries this type of pyramid can be mainly seen in your developing countries mainly can be seen in the developing countries like india India is one of the developing countries, so expanding can be seen. This can be seen in the developing countries. Developing countries. Then, then we have stable one. Stable. Now, here if you look closely, here if you look closely, pre-reproductive and reproductive are they almost equal? If you look closely, in the case of your stable one. pre reproductive and reproductive here pre reproductive is almost equal to reproductive yes almost equal but both the cases is again both of them are greater than the post reproductive yes if you look at the stable one 
प्री रिप्रोडक्टिव एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव आर ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल बट वेन वी कंपेयर बोथ ऑफ देम टू पोस्ट रिप्रोडक्टिव पोस्ट रिप्रोडक्टिव इज दे इज कंपेरेटिवली लेसर पोस्ट रिप्रोडक्टिव दिस वन इज पोस्ट रिप्रोडक्टिव इज कंपेरेटिवली लेसर now this type of particular type of population distribution is mainly seen in the developed countries it is mainly seen where mainly seen in the developed countries example america right america canada norway all of these are developed countries okay hmm. yes in developed countries then we have earn shape in earn shape if you notice this one pre reproductive pre reproductive and post reproductive both are comparatively less and reproductive is comparatively higher here if you look at the diagram of your declining one in declining type of pyramid pre reproductive and post reproductive both of them both the population of these individuals is comparatively less comparatively less that is pre reproductive that is small kids are also very less here that is the humans here the humans here are like no we don't want to marry we don't want to have kids they are reach that stage they are like we don't want to marry we don't want to have kids that is exactly happening in the japan and also the old age is also decreasing here the reproductive phase is the highest here reproductive phase is the highest here now one of the examples is your war countries in case of your war countries also where the old age people and young people usually cannot survive very well Like in your in your Ukraine and Syria and everywhere, rep post reproductive as well as your re uh, pre reproductive population is little less, but reproductive is always high. Reproductive is always high. Okay, students, any doubt here? A question will come from here. A question will definitely come from here. So is it okay? Any doubt here? Ask me right now. Any doubt here? Ask me right now. Exactly. this is your declining this is the stable which is bell shape in nature this is a decline which is urn shape in nature no doubt you amazing because one question will come one question will rupa one question will definitely come from here okay one question will definitely come from here now size of the population tells us a lot about its status in its habitat obviously size of the population tells us a lot of information okay whatever ecological processes we wish to investigate in a population be it uh, be it to be outcome of a competition with another species the impact of predator or the effects of pesticide application like any type of experiment if you want to do any type of experiment in ecology they have given you three examples here the three examples are impact of predators competition and pesticide application we always evaluate them in terms of any change in the population size for example the other example is medicine whenever a new medicine is coming out we always check its impact on a individual population we always check the impact of the medicine on a population level okay on a population level that should be your answer on a population level the size in nature could the size of the population the size of the population in nature could be low as around 10 it could be less than 10 that less amount of individuals can be there example is your siberian cranes at bharatpur wetlands in in any year that is siberian cranes population is usually very less population is usually very less or into millions are you noticing population can be so tiny like how we have less number of students right now so population can be very less but if you if you are when the class started when the super six started we had around 200 students population was very large that time so population can also vary from a small 10 individuals all the way to the millions the millions example here is the different type of zooplanktons that is or chlamydomonas given here chlamydomonas in a pond population size technically population size technically called population density i will explain population density in a better manner wait a minute let me explain that imagine there is a school here imagine 
there is a school here. We have two schools. We have school number one and we have school number two. School number A, sorry, or school number A and school number B. Now, in both the schools, in both the schools, the area is almost same. The area is almost, let's say, 10,000 meters square. 10,000 meters square is the area. Okay. Both the schools, school A and school B, both of them, both of them will have 10,000 meters square area. But in your school A, in your school A, we have around 1,000 students. In school B, we have around 100 students. Now you tell me, now you tell me in the chat, which school, where E, which school has more population density? Tell me in the chat, which school will have more population density? Is it school A? Is it school A or is it school B? Which has more population density? Tell me. Tertiary follicle will have secondary oocyte. You obviously, in the case of your school A, will have more population density. What the what is the meaning of population density now? The meaning of population density is that how much of space is occupied by a each individual. But in the case of your school A, each individual will get around less space. In the case of your school A, each individual will get less space. But in the case of your school B, in the case of your school B, individual will get more space. So density is more here. Density is population density is little less here. Okay. So that is your population density that is designated as the n so population density population density is represented by capital n represented by your capital n okay need not necessarily population density need not necessarily be the measure in the number only again this is our need pyq you might be thinking, sir, such a simple line can be a question. Yes, students, such simple line, such simple line can be a question, need question, right? That is, population density need not necessarily be a measured in number only. Although, total number of, total number in a generally, total number is generally the most appropriate measure of population density. It is in some cases either meaningless or difficult to determine. That which is the case we'll be discussing now. In which of the following cases we cannot measure the population in number. In that case, we should use a different parameter. That is your biomass. That is your biomass. Okay. See here. Meaningless. See here. If there are 200 carrot grass in an area, in an area, there are around 200 carrot grass, which is nothing but parthenium, which is a weed, which is nothing but an invasive weed, parthenium plant, but only a single huge banyan tree, right? In an area, we have around 200, in total 200 carrot grass and a single banyan tree, a single banyan tree with a large canopy, stating that the population density of the banyan tree is relatively low if you say that if you look at the number obviously if you look at the number banyan tree is only one if you look at the number banyan tree is only one but parthenium grass is around 200 if you look at the number now if you look at the number which population density is higher obviously if you look at the number number wise carrot grass population density is higher but is it true no that is Stating that the population density of banyan tree is low relative to that the carrot grass amount to underestimating the enormous role of banyan tree in that community. True. If you look at the biomass, then you get the correct answer here. Okay. In such case, per in such cases, the percent cover or biomass is more meaningful measure of the population. Si pop population size the total number is again not an easily adoptable measure true you can never always count 
you can you can never always count uh, you know population for example in a petri dish for example in a petri dish we have so many bacteria in a petri dish we have around hundreds of bacteria can you sit and count the bacteria tell me tell me can you sit and count can you sit and count the number of bacteria here can you sit and count the number of bacteria here no true you cannot sit and count the bacteria then how do you calculate the bi biomass or can you how can you cal calculate the population now can anyone tell me in this particular petri dish we have bacteria right can you count the bacteria no then how can you calculate then how will you calculate actually you can calculate by number there is a technique called as quadrant technique there is a technique called as your quadrant technique where you calculate one biomass here sorry you calculate the number here and you multiply but 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 what if you have the bacteria in a test tube what if you have the bacteria in a test tube can you calculate that time imagine you have a test tube here inside the test tube we have the bacteria in the test tube we have bacteria can you count now it is in a soluble state you cannot count the bacteria at that time so that time we have a equipment called as photo in that time we have uh, called uh, equipment called as your photometer photo spectrophotometer spectrophotometer where you add a light when a light will pass through we will see the turbidity of bacteria and will decide how much of bacteria is present but that is not in your syllabus all you need to know that there are some exceptions there are some exceptions such as bacteria where you cannot count the number of bacteria okay you cannot the count the number of bacteria that is a need pyq that is a need pyq all of you okay that is if if the population is huge and the counting is impossible or very time consuming right very time consuming that time you cannot do it right for example that is the if you have a dense laboratory culture of bacteria in a petri dish what is the best measure of to report this density the answer is your photo spectrometer photo spectrophotometer okay sometimes for a certain ecological investigations there is no need to know the absolute population very important line again sometimes you do not need to know absolute sometimes you do not need to know what is the exact number right sometimes you do not need to know no you do not need to know the exact number in those cases you in those cases we do not need the absolute population size we do not need the absolute density that time we use something called as your what can anyone tell me in the chat that time we use something called as your relative density we use what we use relative density now what is this relative density imagine we have relatives as you have relatives if you go in one function based on the behavior of your relatives they will judge you also yes imagine you go to a function and you have one small kid a small relative that small relative is acting little mental it is running around here and there it is running around here and there based on that relative they'll judge you also right like what family comes from that is relative density in relative density also you calculate the density based on other parameters based on other parameters hmm. right based on the parameters example is given here see here that time you use relative density serves the purpose of equally well for instance a number of fish caught per trap is a good enough measure for the total population density in the lake what is the meaning of that line listen to me very carefully imagine you're sitting in a boat imagine you're sitting in a boat and you you want to know how many fishes are there in the pond you cannot go inside the water and count the fish you cannot so what do you do that time in those cases in those cases you need to take a trap you need to take a net net is approximately around let's say around 50 meters net is around 50 meters you take the net and you throw in the water then you catch a, you catch some amount of fish imagine from 50 meter imagine from 50 meter net 50 meter net you obtained around 50 meter net you almost obtained around 100 fishes you obtained 100 fishes from a 50 meter net 
and you also know and you also know the diameter of the lake with that information you can calculate the relative density of fishes okay we can i'm explaining i'm, I'm still not done Relative density. Relative density is basically a way. It is basically a way in which you use some parameter. In which you use some parameter to calculate the actual population. To calculate the actual population. Clear? That is your that is your relative density. Here, see, we did not know the number of fishes in the lake. We did not know the number of fishes in the lake. All we knew was in in 50 meter net in 50 meter net we obtained 100 fishes we also know the size of the lake with that information we can approximately calculate approximately calculate the number of fishes that approximate calculation is called as your relative density based on one information you are calculating the other information okay clear we are mostly obliged to estimate population sizes the indirectly without actually see without actually counting them or seeing them indirect calculation we are doing indirect calculation niharika clear i hope this point is clear to all of you the tiger census. see even in the case of tiger census even in the case of tiger census you will never go like one tiger is here one tiger is here one tiger is here by the time you count the number of tigers the tiger will eat you so in the case of your tiger census what do they see in the case of your tiger census, they usually see the paw. Can you see the paw print? Paw print on the soil. So you count the different types of paw prints based on size. The tiger census in a in their national park and tiger reserves is often based on pug marks and fecal pellets. Pug mark as well as fecal pellets. So we are calculating the population density or size indirectly. Okay. Students, I know this is so conceptual, but are you understanding the concept, students? I know if you read this on your own, it can get a little confusing. If you read this on your own, it can get a little confusing. So that's why I'm explaining in detail. Okay? Is this clear now? One second, let me close the doubt. Let me close this. I'll see the chat on the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Solve this question. Let's see who can solve this question now. Let's see who can solve this question. Easy question. That is, they have given you a diagram. This is again a neat PYQ. Neat. PYQ. What is the question? Select the correct option for the given age pyramid. First of all, tell me which type of pyramid is this? See, triangle uh, the pyramid, which is this is basically a expanding one, right? It is a stable population. Tell me if it's, is it stable? No, it is not. It is still growing. The pre-reproductive individuals are equal to the post-reproductive individuals. No, because we know pre-reproductive is higher compared to your post reproductive next this pyramid is shown by developing or growing countries in this pyramid number of female will be more than males this information is not available the answer is your b this type of particular pyramid is mainly observed in the case of your developing countries okay easy question hmm Can you see the next question here? Population size. Population size of a given area or space can be determined by many ways. True. Population size or area can be determined in many ways. One of the methods called as total number count is not useful. Where you can never count the number of individual. The method of counting individuals is not applicable in which of the following that is siberian cranes in Bandia, in uh, uh, bharatpur wetlands we know it is less than 10 countable then we have humans living in city of delhi census we can count then we have the 
डेंस कल्चर ऑफ बैक्टीरियम इन पेटी डिश वी के नॉट काउंट इज द आंसर लास्ट मेरी टोटल नंबर ऑफ ट्रीज इन पर्टिकुलर स्मॉल एरिया वी कैन ऑल्सो काउंट दिस सो वॉट इज आंसर द आंसर इज थ्री यू के नॉट काउंट द नंबर ऑफ बैक्टीरिया इन पेटरी डिश ओके इजी क्वेश्चन स्टूडेंट्स द रीजन आई एम टेलिंग यू सी आई मेड श्योर यू अंडरस्टैंड द लाइन वेर द क्वेश्चन कैन कम फ्रॉम the reason i told you about bacteria and everything because i know a need pyq has come from there and that is the reason i'm explaining every line of ncert because from every line of ncert a question can come you might think the the line is so difficult line is so you know very easy to understand but you know when the question will come in the examination you'll be like oh from this point on question came huh? you will feel you'll get that feeling okay uh, now can we start with population growth now any doubt in population attributes population attribute is over now we start with population growth population growth can we start population growth let me look at the chat can we start population growth now students any doubt in area students do you have nct next to you tell me do you have your nct next to you are you reading the lines with me are you marking the important points with me You are marking right. Amazing. That's how it should be. Okay. The the size of a population of any species is not a stat a statal uh, is is what is it? I'm not able to read it here. It is a statal parameter. Means it is not stable. Okay. It keeps changing with time. So it statal parameter is not a constant parameter because we know population will increase, population will decrease. Right. changing with time depending on various factors including food availability uh, predation uh, predation pressure and adverse weather in fact it is these changes in a population what are the changes predation pressure adverse weather and food remember all of these lines are important all these lines are important three factors food predation pressure and adverse weather in fact The, it is the these changes in a population density that give rise to the idea of what is happening to a population so if i ask you a question in neat examination what are the factors which are responsible for the initial response for the change in population your answer should be these three here whether it is flourishing or declining whatever whatever might be the ultimate reason the density of the population in a given habitat during a given period fluctuates due to change in the four basic processes see this is the basic thing that is the basic thing but there are main four reasons for the change in the population that is your mortality natality immigration and emigration immigration as well as emigration clear that is natality is one of first word natality is basically refers to the number of births during a given period in a population that are added to the initial density very important so we have n is the initial density plus the natality that is the birth that is the birth n plus b that is n is the initial n is the initial density plus the individual added that is the birth of the individual then we have mortality that is the number of deaths in a population during a given period that is your n plus d that is initial population plus minus death one second students eraser minus death will give you the new population okay then we have immigration immigration is the number of individuals of the same species that have come into the habitat from elsewhere during the time period under a certain condition that is migration that is immigration immigration that is immigration from somewhere else around the world some organisms are coming into the population that is going to be your n plus i n plus i then we have emigration that is people who are living to outside countries you are emigrating elsewhere that is it is the number of individuals of a population who left the habitat like some of the students are going now right to abroad to study 
you are if you don't get mbbs seat here they go to abroad into mbbs seat which trust me is not worth it that much you getting a government medical seat that's going to be the best thing which is going to happen because if you want to do abroad it's going to be expensive and you're going to be away from the family because remember family is more important and you're going to be away from the family so remember get a government medical seat okay there is the emigration that go elsewhere during the time period under the consideration that is emigration is the exit emigration is e for emigration e for exit that is initial population density minus the e minus the e okay minus the e okay now see here population density minus will happen what mortality that is the death of an organism then we have natality that is they are adding some organisms then we have immigration that is adding to the population density and then emigration is removing something from the population density minus okay now here one equation is there students ignore this students usually ignore this small statement here one small one that is if n is the population density at the time t at a given time right now at a given time right now n is the population density then the density at time t plus 1 can be represented as what is t plus 1 that is some other given time that is extra given time that could be your nt plus birth plus immigration minus death plus emig emigration there is this is very important they can ask you a question neat examination what is the equation for n plus 1 so please remember n plus 1 is nothing but your nt nt plus birth rate birth rate plus immigration in total minus death plus emigration this is going to be your equation for a given population at t plus one time at a t plus one time ah one question is here can you solve this question can you solve this question all of you given below are two statements given below are need this is a neat pyq neat pyq assertion a population has certain attributes like birth rate death rate while a individual individual organism does not do you remember the line i told you i made you line the write the line i told you need pyq so organism an organism uh, sorry a population a population will have certain attributes but individual will not have any attributes reason the reason very simple the birth and death rate are expressed as change in number with respect to the members of the population which is the answer take some time and answer Hmm. are you sure it's one or is it one or two is it this or this read the question again carefully can you see birth rate and death rate are expressed in uh, express a change in number with respect to the members of population yes birth rate and death rate are expressed in, as change in number population has certain attributes like birth rate and death rate while an individual organism is this line explain this line tell me see here is it explaining here is the clue is it explaining with respect to members of the population yes it is explaining so answer is a answer is going to be a clear all of you are smart now you can answer these questions easily next you can see from the above equation remember that equation i told you you can see from the above equation all of you can see right uh, i cannot see here all of you open your book and see the equation once okay you can see from the above equation that the population density will increase population density will increase if the number of birth plus number of birth plus number of immigration is more than the death if when the population will increase the population will only increase when the birth plus immigration b plus i is more than d plus e clear so birth plus immigration is higher compared to the death as well as emigration as well as emigration 
अंडर नॉर्मल कंडीशन बर्थ एंड डेथ आर ऑलमोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स इंफ्लुएंसिंग द पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी द अदर टू फैक्टर्स अगेन द अदर टू फैक्टर्स अज्यूमिंग द इंपॉर्टेंस ओनली अंडर स्पेशल कंडीशन फॉर दिस इंस्टेंस इफ अ न्यू हैबिटेट इज जस्ट बींग कॉलोनाइज इमिग्रेशन मे बी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट मोर significantly to the population growth rate than the birth rate so what are the two main factors the two main factors for a change in population density is going to be birth rate and death rate except except is going to be if a colony is colonizing right now in those case if a new colony is being formed in those cases visitant new habitat is just being colonized immigration play a crucial role in those cases immigration will play a much more crucial role clear immigration will play a crucial role if a new colony is being formed this can be an ar question this right here these three lines can be an ar question assertion reason question okay can be a assertion reason question okay any doubt here students ask me right now any doubt here because every single line can be a question from this chapter you might be thinking questions mainly come from the interactions no question can come from this lines here also and you will be like you might have ignored all this some students ignore all this thinking that it's a basic small theory i can without even studying i can understand this but no simple lines also a question can come from here okay yes yes i'll be teaching principles of inheritance also now ultimate focus because from here last year neat 2023 a question has come a question has come from 2016 also a question has come from growth models so can we start growth models now can we start growth models clear any doubt here ask me right now students because i want this chapter to be very clear to you because this is the basis of ecology okay clear any doubt here ask me right now if there is any doubt ask me if there is no doubt we will start with growth models now there are two different growth models one is your exponential exponential the other one is which one tell me first one is your exponential which is also also called as your geometric the other one is i'm looking in the chat now okay you are not telling so i will start on my own growth models okay does the growth of a population with time show any specific predictable parameters does the population show a particular parameter everything in this world trust me students every single thing in this world will show a parameter for example if your birthday is coming closer your best friend will be more best friend to you because you will give them a treat and if your neat exam is coming closer you will study more if board exam is coming closer you will study more that is also a pattern so every single thing in this world has a small pattern so just like every single thing in this world has a pattern your growth models your growth models also has a specific pattern of growth now what are the specific pattern of growth let's see okay we have been concerned about unbridled human population growth unbridled means uncontrolled uncontrolled growth of human population and problems created by its own by by its by by it in our own country that is india also has a population problem okay and it is therefore natural for us to curious curious if different animals population in nature behave the same way or show some restraint on the growth that is do just like humans like humans do not have any control over population in india the population is always growing so do you think even animals also behave the same way or do animals control like a dog will be like no i had 10 puppies i will stop the growth now i'll stop reproduction now a, a polar bear will be like no i had one cub right now can i stop right now do they also think the same let's see okay let's see <clears throat> exactly logistic so first one is your exponential growth first one is your exponential growth okay let me tell you a story imagine let me take someone from the chat 
let me take someone from the chat mm, let's take niharika from the chat imagine i am giving niharika unlimited money will the niharika will be like uh, i will save some money uh, for uh, for tomorrow and i will buy this only today no niharika will go like you know i'll go to shopping now i'll go to zara i'll go to west side i'll buy so many clothes and come i will go party here i'll go party there i'll eat everything i'll buy everything for my parents and everything so you will spend the money like there is no tomorrow yes so just like how niharika will spend all the money if unlimited money is given even organisms even in the case of organisms if they have given if we give them unlimited amount of food they will keep on growing their keep population will keep on growing that is resources food and space in your case what is money in your case what is money availability is obviously essential for unimpaired growth that is un un unimpaired means uh, without any constriction unimpaired growth of a population ideally when resources in a habitat are unlimited unlimited like buffet unlimited each species has an ability to realize full its innate potential if i give you unlimited money if i give you unlimited money you will realize i can buy this i can buy that i can go here and eat next day i'll go to one five star next day i'll buy one car next day i'll buy one bike your full mental ability like you know to uh, buy this and buy that everything will become activated right so even organism its ability will be activated to grow in number as darwin observed while developing his theory of natural selection then the population grows in an exponential or geometric fashion that is exponential means it will continuously keep on increasing the population will continuously increase right the if the population of a size n we all of us know the birth rate not total number of per but per capita birth are represented as b and that rate is represented as d then the increase or decrease in n that is population density during the unit period time can be written in the form of differentiation that is dn by dt dn by dt equals rn is given rn only right dn by dt is equal to rn this is a need pyq dn by dt that is death rate by the, the that is death rate as well as birth rate can be written as dn by dt can be written as rn see here birth rate minus death rate into n birth rate can de death rate can be written as r birth rate b minus d can be written as r and this r is called as intrinsic rate of natural increase what is this r r can be told as intrinsic rate of natural increase now what is the meaning of this Can you tell me, sir? I'm not understanding. I told, I know the definition. I know the definition of R, but I don't know what is the meaning of R. What is the meaning of intrinsic rate of natural increase? I'll give you two examples to make you to understand. The first example: mm, Imagine there is a man. He has all the money in the world. He has all the money in the world. He has everything in the world, but he is not reproductively fit. In that case, his R value will be less. that is intrinsic factor inside factor is not working the other example is there are some neat aspirants there are some neat aspirants they will have all the lecture in the world all the lectures in the world every single notes in the world every single pyq test series everything will be given for free but they will not utilize because from inside intrinsic factor is again low if you do not have, if you do not have that fire inside you that i should become a doctor nothing will work you can have all the information in the world you can have all the knowledge you can have all the but if you do not have the inside factor that i will become a doctor i should become a doctor it will not happen that is the r r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase inside the fire should be there that one so dn by dt is equal to rn okay dn by dt is equal to rn hello navina welcome to the class okay the r in the equation is called as your intrinsic rate of natural increase and is a very important parameter chosen for assessing the impact of any biotic or abiotic factors 
on a population growth. So for a population growth to happen, for a population to flourish, R is the most important factor. R is the most important factor. To give you some idea about the magnitude of R value, the Norway rat has around R values around 0.015. That is, intrinsic rate of natural increase is little bit less. Right? And for your floor beetle, it is 0.12. That is, R value is more. Then, in 1981, the R value for the human population in India was around 0.0. 205 and I I am very sure the R value would have increased by now I do not know the actual equation I do not know the actual number but by now the R value would have increased okay this all is clear it is not important huh here the above equation describes the exponential or the geometric increase. The exponential or geometric increase is happening when an organism has unlimited resources. We, if you plot it in a graph, we get a J-shaped curve. We get a J-shaped graph. The pattern of the population, we get a result in a J-shaped curve when we plot the N in relation to the time. If you are familiar with the basic calculus, I don't remember. I hope you remember. Last time I studied maths was in my class 12th, PCMB. Don't remember calculus. But if you remember calculus, the basic definition is, if you are familiar with the basic calculus, you can derive the integral form of the exponential growth that is n1 is equal to n0 e to the power rt. Clear? nt is equal to? Yeah, nt is the population density at the time t. nt equals. n0 is the population n0 is the population density at time 0, r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase and e is the base of natural logarithm. Base of natural logarithm. Hopefully you know calculus, you can, you, you can understand this last point. Because if I have to explain this last, this equation, I have to learn calculus, which is not possible right now. Okay. Next one. See here, very important diagram, very, very important, very, very 100% important. See here. Can you see the J shape curve? It looks like a J. J shape curve. In this equation is dn by dt is equal to rn. This is for your exponential growth. Exponential growth or geometric growth. Geometric growth. So in a neat examination, in a neat examination, they can directly give you the graph and they can expect you the, they can ask you the J shape curve will show which type of growth or J shape is as which equation okay then we have the sigmoid growth we have the sigmoid growth which is for your which is for your logistic growth the equation here is again dn by dt is equal to r into n k minus n by k now what is this k here that is called as carrying capacity i will tell you in the next five minutes what is carrying capacity okay darwin showed that even a slow growing animal like elephant could reach enormous population in the absence of a check that is if there is no one checking on the elephant elephant will keep on eating keep on excreting keep on reproducing we will have many elephants we will have many many elephants okay then we have then we have the logistic growth then we have the logistic growth Then we have the logistic growth here. What is there in logistic growth? Number of population. Sorry, no. No population of any species in nature has its disposal unlimited resources. So I told you, Niharika has unlimited money. But in reality, Niharika is only getting the pocket money. So can she, can she buy a car from the pocket money? Can she go and buy a lot of clothes from the pocket money? No. She has to save the pocket money and give a small tree to her friends. Yes. So, in reality, expectation is unlimited money. But what is the reality? Reality is limited resources. What is the reality? Reality is nothing but your limited resources. Reality is what? Reality is nothing but your little bit of resources. Small, small resources. Okay. Small, unlimited. Reality is what? Any species in nature at its disposal unlimited resources to permit the exponential growth 
So what is reality? There is no unlimited resources. Okay. Now this leads to the computation. Example, I'll tell you. Do you have siblings in your house? Do you have siblings in your house? Like I have a sister, right? When I was when we, we are in a house, imagine my mother is bringing only one chips packet. Resources limited. Both, will both of us fight for the chips packet? Yes. Both of us will be like, I want this packet, I want this packet. So every single time, every single time there is less resources. Every single time there is less resources, the fight will be more. The fight will be more. That is the competition will be more. It leads to competition between the individuals for the limited resources. Eventually, the fittest individual will survive and, and reproduce. The uh, government... The government, uh, government of many countries have also realized this fact and introduced various restraints with the view to limit the human population. Recently, I read a news in Rajasthan, if a particular family has more than two children, the particular person will not get a government job. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, we have hum do, hamare do. That also is a government, uh, this thing, uh, government, uh, it was an in initiative to make sure that the particular population of human population is reduced. Why? Because the resources are less. Resources are very less. Right? Now, in nature, a given habitat has enough resources to support the, at a maximum possible number beyond which the number grows beyond which no further beyond which no further growth is possible that is called as your carrying capacity for example in a in a particular house we have four people staying in the house imagine we have only have two chapatis can they survive on the two, two, two chapatis no and imagine if in that house in the same house if the population increases from 4 people to 10 people, can the, can the family survive? No. Similarly, in the case of humans, the entire population of any living organism on earth, we have limited resources. If the population increases more than the carrying capacity or more than the capacity for the earth to carry, the population will decrease automatically. The example is COVID. COVID is one of the examples which nature will check. You know, population increasing. We need to stop the population. Tsunamis, earthquakes. All of these are different natural parameters in which population is controlled. Okay. Let us call this limit as the nature's carrying capacity as K for the species in which that in that habitat. Okay. That is the carrying capacity also called as K. Clear? Now, a population growing in a habitat, population growing in a habitat with limited resources show initial lag phase. So, in the case of your sigmoid curve, in the case of your sigmoid curve, can you see? Initially, there is a lag phase here. This is the lag phase here. This is the initial lag phase. Then we have a complete exponential phase and then we have a asymptotic line so initial lag phase then we have log phase also called as your exponential phase then we have a line asymptotic line where the population is becoming constant see here for lag phase following the phase of acceleration that is your exponential phase acceleration and decrease and deceleration and finally an asymptote that is the constant line. Asymptote is the constant line later on. When the population density reaches the carrying capacity. So when you get the asymptote line, the asymptote line is reached when carrying capacity is reached. That is n equals k. n equals k need PYQ. When the population density reaches the carrying capacity, when the population density reaches the carrying capacity, that time we get a asymptote line. Okay, a asymptote line. A plot of n in the plot of n in a relation to the time t results in a sigmoid curve. For logistic, for logistic growth, when the resources are limited, we obtain a sigmoid curve. We obtain a sigmoid curve. This type of population growth is called as your, also called as your Werner's Pearl logistic 
growth and it is described by the equation dn by dt equals rn that is k minus n by k k minus n by k very important very important particular equation okay where n is the population density all of you know that already r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase all of you know that already and k is the carrying capacity k is the nature's carrying capacity okay then we have since the resources for the growth must growth for most animal populations are finite and become limited sooner or later the logistic growth model is the realistic one again very important line very very important that is logistic growth curve is realistic one because in the nature in the nature you cannot have unlimited resources can you have it no so remember students the most logical and the most realistic one is the logistic growth clear is the logistic growth now can we take a small break now all our can we take a small break a 10 minutes break after the 10 minutes break we will start with the life history and as well as the interactions okay let's take a 10 minutes break and after 10 minutes break i want everyone to drink some water eat something refresh yourself and then we will start the life history variations one paragraph and interactions where the most questions come from many many questions come from the interactions okay can we start can we take a small break 10 minutes break what is the time right now the time right now is 8 35 8 35 is the time now 8 40, 8 35 to 8 45 so 8 45 break is over okay 8 45 the break will be over okay okay so all of you watching right now please like the video like the video right now and we will start and students if you have any doubt ask me right now any doubt any form of doubt you can ask me and i'll see the doubts and i'll come back from the break and i'll answer your doubts okay okay works
हेलो 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 वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक टू द क्लास नो सम ऑफ देम आस्किंग मी सर कैन यू एक्सप्लेन दिस पर्टिकुलर वन सेकेंड नो लेट मी क्विकली एक्सप्लेन रिकैप यू द दिस पर्टिकुलर ग्राफ वंस Now, students, remember the population density and the time graph has two type of graphs. First graph is based on your the first graph is based on your exponential growth. That is J shape growth. That is J shape growth where the resources are unlimited resources and that results in a J shape curve. Can you see the population is keep on increasing. That is there is no check on the population. The second type is your sigmoid curve. The next one is your sigmoid curve where there is a check. That is called as your carrying capacity capacity and this type of graph is the result of your logistic growth because of logistic growth here and this particular sigmoid curve has three different paths the first one is called as your lag phase then we have the log phase and then we have the asymptote line the asymptote line is because of the carrying capacity this asymptote line is because here density equals carrying capacity when the population density equals carrying capacity the population will not increase any further okay that is the entire graph here the next thing i want all of you to understand here is um, where is that ha huh. the last line here since the resources for a growth for most animal populations are finite that is meaning is that in the nature in nature animals do not have unlimited resources they do not have unlimited resources that is in the case of nature the resources are very limited in number right so that if that is the reason which type of growth will they follow will it will they follow exponential growth or will they follow logistic growth they'll follow logistic growth so logistic growth is the most realistic growth which is found in the nature in nature you will never find in nature you will never find the exponential growth because we can never have the unlimited resources you cannot have that okay so everything in the world is limited remember that everything in the world is limited clear is that point clear to all of you that is the meaning of the last line here now let's read the life history variation again a small paragraph a question might not come from here but it is important for understanding the next concepts let's read the let's read the paragraph entirely first population evolve to maximum populations evolve to their maximum uh, population evolve to evolve to maximize their reproductive fitness that is every single population will maximize in the reproductive fitness uh, maximize the reproductive fitness also called as your darwin's fitness when the r value is very high that is if the natural intrinsic rate of natural increase is very high population also will be very high that time okay so whenever r is high population will also be high in a habitat in which they live under the particular set of selection pressure organisms evolve towards the most efficient reproductive strategy that is under the certain conditions for example there could be certain variations in the environment now plants plants or animals will adapt to the environment and they will reach something called as reproductive fitness that is they they will develop some strategies for reproduction some organisms breed only once in their lifetime example is bamboo bamboo will reproduce only once in its lifetime and it will die later on that is other example is also pacific salmon fish while other breed other other organisms breed many times during their lifetime most birds and animal mammals some produce a large number of small sized offsprings that is they will produce a large number of small small sized offsprings that is called as your oysters example is oysters and your fishes while other organisms produce a small number of large size offsprings example is your birds and humans mammals we don't produce a lot we don't reproduce a lot but we will reproduce only once or two times or three times in a lifespan and we will produce a large large size organism in case of humans so which is desirable for maximizing fitness which is more desirable 
obviously the second one later one ecologists suggest that life history traits of organisms have evolved in relation to the constraints imposed by the abiotic and biotic components of the habitat in which they live heavy english heavy english i know the simple meaning is that for example a particular tadpole a particular uh, frog a frog will produce a lot of tadpoles why because a lot of tadpoles will not survive in for future so they will make sure many small small tadpoles are released in large quantity but in the case of humans we are we have control over our biotic and abiotic factors little bit we have control over that so we'll reproduce very less so reproduction mainly depends upon the control over the abiotic and biotic factors if you do not have control lot of offsprings if you have controlled less offsprings that's all less offsprings clear in which evolution of life history traits in different species is currently an important area of research being conducted by the ecologists now students one small thing i have to tell you that is you will have so many doubts yes like in offline in online i, I can clear some doubts but there are so many doubts i'll miss sometimes but students vidantu is actually having offline centers i have already told you this before that is vidantu learning centers offline centers where you can ask unlimited doubts unlimited doubts that is during the class during the class you can ask a doubt after the class you can have a doubt session there also you can ask a doubts or our example you are studying a doubt you are studying a particular concept imagine you get doubt can you ask that time yes that is if you get a doubt somewhere in the middle of the session you are getting a doubt all you need to do that time is scan the doubt upload the doubt and the teacher will message you back or take a one 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 session for a doubt this is only possible in your offline centers not in the online because we are so busy in so many different paths but in the case of off offline center you will have a dedicated mentor for you who will make sure all the doubts are clear and this doubt solving is just one of the parameters of many different parameters which are available on the offline center so what are you waiting for if you if the vedantu center is near you please go visit it once and check that is amazing amazing 3d visualization smart boards and also this is called a smart clicker which is also very fun so if vedantu is near you go check it out once okay but sometimes these courses can become little expensive so how do you tackle that expense we are providing that also if you are bright if you are amazing smart that time there is an exam called as ib sat exam if you write this ib sat exam you will get scholarship also students all you need to do is show hardship show hardship that you will do it we are here to provide everything even if you don't have money you can write the scholarship and get the scholarship and the course price will become so less for you okay so this is for offline because online we can conduct so many free things but offline requires a lot of you know investment right so there are some price for it okay so go check it out the offline part very interesting okay very very interesting now can we start with the next the most important one that is population interactions so can i see some energy in the chat can i see some enthusiasm that yes sir we want to study population interaction yes sir we will pay attention now more can we start now can we start population interaction the most important part of this chapter the most important part of this chapter where questions will keep on repeating year after year especially in the predation especially in the commensalism especially in the mutualism questions will keep on repeating so are you ready for the last part of the chapter ready tell me yes sir i am ready to learn the last part of the chapter and students even for a board examination this is very very important very important for board examination that is population interaction okay can we start population interaction now tell me in the i told you before in a population can we ever find a single organism like here in humans we have single single people and couple but in the case of in the case of your population you will never have a single organism that is organisms are always present in a group so when organisms are present in a group will they interact among each other yes they will interact among each other that is your population interaction okay so can you think of any natural habitat on earth that is inhabited by just a single species the answer is no there is no such habitat such a situation even in the inconvincible for example 
for any species the minimal requirement is one or more species on which it can feed for example every single organism will be present like in a, in a particular area there will be more than one species also will be present because we need to eat other organisms right for example can i survive alone no i need some plant or animal to which i can eat and survive yes that is saying even a plant species which makes its own food cannot survive alone even a particular plant cannot survive alone alone why because if a plant has to survive it needs to do photosynthesis it needs minerals it needs nutrition it needs inorganic substances how will the plant obtain the inorganic substance can anyone tell me plants will obtain the inorganic substance from the minerals which are obtained in the which are present in the soil which are basically made by the detrivores if there are no detrivores no inorganic minerals can the plant survive without bacteria no plants cannot survive without bacteria or earthworm also right it needs soil microbes to break down the organic matter into in the soil and turn and return the inorganic nutrients for absorption then and then how will the plant manage pollination without an animal agent for example if the plant is doing self pollination then it is okay but what if it is doing cross pollination can the cross pollination happen without animals yes it can happen that is a wind air and air water everything is there but animals and insects are the most important ones right now it is it is obvious that the na nature animals plants and microbes do not and cannot live in isolation but interact in various ways to form biological community even in even in the minimal community many interaction linkages exist although uh, all may not really steadily or uh, may not be readily apparent means it not be visible to you but some interaction will be happening constantly some interaction will happen constantly yes notes maker i did speak to sir but it is very difficult to manage a team it is very difficult to make separate team like that because all of us are working on different channels right now interspecific interaction first one tell me interspecific interaction is it between the organisms or it is within the organism tell me in the chat interspecific interaction is it between the organisms or is it within the organism within different two organisms it is between two different organisms interspecific for example a uh, algae will interact with a fungus lichen a uh, fungus will interact with a particular uh, plant interaction a uh, deer will interact with a lion interaction between two different organisms so always remember interspecific interaction means interaction between two different organisms okay interaction arises from a interaction of a population of two different species see is written here two different species they could be beneficial that is one of the organisms can be benefited or both can be benefited it could be detrimental the meaning of detrimental is harmful for one organism or both organisms or neutral that is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if the relationship is there okay it doesn't matter if the relationship is there neither harm that is not benefited to one uh, to one of the species or both assigning plus for beneficial plus means beneficial minus means negative no means neutral with that being said we have the most important table that is your different types of interaction the first type of interaction the first type of interaction is your mutualism in the case of mutualism both the species both the species are benefited that is species a and species c b both are equally benefited in the mutualism then the second one is the competition that is competition is happening in the case of competition both are not benefited that is minus and minus now what about predation in the case of predation one organism is benefited that is your predator is benefited and prey the poor prey is harmed so one is plus one is minus then we have parasitism again in the case of par parasitism the parasite is benefited the host is in is 
you know suffering the host is suffering detrimental in the host then we have commensalism commensalism are the very good people in the world that was like ratan tata ratan tata will keep on donating the money he will keep on making some good things in the world ratan tata is doing right that is he is not benefited ratan tata is not benefited or in harmed but other people from his money they are benefited yes these are the rich people who are donating money for charity that is one is benefited other one is not benefited nor harmed neutral okay the next one is amensalism the people which you need to stay away from amensalism are the people which you need to stay away from why because they will not you know benefit from anything from you they will only harm you they will only harm you that is one organism is harmed other one is not benefited not harmed it is only harming the other one okay it is only harming the other one sir if a species cannot live alone then it is not it is not right to say population right it should be pronounced a community see you are telling me if uh, if a in a if a species cannot live alone yes a population is group of see population means what a group of same type of individuals that is population community is a community the community means different different species are coming together okay clear now can we start one by one let's start with predation now the most basic thing the predation now tell me in the chat what comes to your mind what comes to your mind when you think about predation national geography right national geography comes to your mind that is one lion is there one small deer is there lion is chasing the lion is chasing the deer that comes to your mind the same thing also comes to my mind but is that only predation is that also the predation it is the only predation in the world no what if i tell you a small cute bird a small cute bird is eating a seed from a plant is that a predation tell me in the chat is that a predation like a small bird cute bird is eating a seed is that also predation the answer is yes that is also a predation okay let's read the line here what would happen if all the energy fixed by the all drops like never mind you think you can think of predation as a nature's way of transferring to transferring energy to the higher trophic levels transferring to the higher trophic level the energy fixed by the plants when we think when we think about predators and prey the most probable probability is the tiger and the deer that comes to your mind right but a sparrow see here but a sparrow eating on any seed is no less than a no less than a predator so your small cute sparrow is also a predator here so that is also comes under predation that also comes under predation okay although animals eating plants are categorized as herbivores yes animals eating plants is herbivores but is herbivores a predation yes herbivores is also a predation remember herbivores is also a type of predation herbivores herbivores is also a type of predation and they are in a broad ecological context not very different from the predators so herbivores are also eating plants herbivores are also eating plants that is also a type of predation that also is a type of predation clear now here i'll make you write some points which you might have missed out for example what are the advantages or what are the you know points which you can understand from predation which color let's see bite no mm. is it visible this color no it's not visible which usually students miss out in predation there are few points which i want all of you to understand in predation there are few points which i want all of you to understand that is first one is somewhere given here first one is somewhere given here ha huh. that is predation as nature's way of transferring energy to the energy transfer into the higher tropic level so predation is involved in what predation is involved in transfer of energy predation is involved in the transfer of energy from your lower trophic level to the 
higher trophic level all the way from the plants to the animals so predation is involved in what transfer of energy remember that besides acting as a conduct for energy transfer meaning of conducts meaning a channel or a pipeline for transferring the energy transfer of energy across the tropic levels predators play a other important role what other important role write down with me other important role they keep the prey population under the control the second one is they keep prey population under control under control for example if the tiger population if the tiger population suddenly decreased will the deer population increase yes what if a snake is eating on a frog if the snake population goes down is the frog population going to increase yes frog will cause a nuisance it will cause ecological balance disbalance yes so your predation is keeping prey population in control it is keeping keeping the prey population in check next one but for predators prey species could achieve very high population densities and cause ecological see here ecological instability if there is no predators right when a certain exotic species are introduced into a geographical area they become invasive here this is the one more example is here write down this one when a new species is introduced in a particular environment it becomes invasive why because it does not have a predator for example scientific example is that uh, parthenium parthenium uh, and also your uh, water hyacinth water hyacinth and parthenium when they were added to the indian indian land or indian water they kept on growing the main reason for high water hyacinth was which the propagation but the other main reason was no one was checking the growth no one was like you know stop the growth or no one was eating the parthenium so that the population reduces so it became it spread like a wide fire so that is why population predators are extremely important to make sure the population is checked population is checked here okay it is introduction into introduced into a geographical area they become invasive and start spreading fast and become invade invade land that does not have its natural predators why because it does not have a natural predator a natural predator will always keep in check the prey very important line okay the example is example is given the ppc example ppc example for invasion ppc example for invasion what is the example what is ppc ppc is your prickly pear cactus very important line prickly prickly pear cactus was a invasive species prickly pear cactus was a invasive species in the case of your australia in your australia in the early 1920s the it caused havoc that is your prickly pear prickly pear cactus kept on growing why because no one was controlling no one was eating the cactus there was no predator was eating the cactus hence the cactus kept on growing uncontrollable growth uncontrollable growth by spreading rapidly into millions of hectares of land finally finally what they do finally they realized wait a minute no one is eating this plant naturally here in australia what if we bring up predator from other country also imagine we bring up predator from other country who is eating this ppc prickly pear prickly pear cactus so later on they introduce later on they introduce invasive species cactus was brought under the control only after the cactus feeding predator a moth from its natural habitat was introduced into the country it is type of bio control agent was introduced later on a bio control agent was introduced so ppc population decreased later on that is prickly pear cactus population decreased only after the bio control agent this right here is a neat pyq did everyone understand this concept did everyone understand this concept students hmm. clear students Did you understand, understand this line? That is biological control method 
adopt in agriculture pest control you will learn this in biotechnology you will learn this in biotechnology that is biocontrol agent is based on the ability of the predator the second ability of predator is keeping the prey population under control very important it's a neat pyq please learn this if you didn't understand ask me right now if you didn't understand this point ask me right now if it is clear just say clear sir i am understanding every line of ncrt today i am decoding the ncrt today okay okay now next one now to regulate the prey population predators also help in maintaining the species diversity in a community so what is the other function of your predators they will keep species diversity diversity yes they keep species diversity that is the third point they help in maintaining the species diversity now you will ask me sir how will they maintain the species diversity how will they maintain can anyone tell me anyone tell me how predators will maintain the species diversity the answer is very simple the answer is very very simple very simple i'll tell you i'll tell you imagine king kong is there when the king kong is sitting in the jungle will the other small small will the other small small insects fight for the top position tell me when the king kong the main boss is there in the jungle will the other small small insects or small small animals fight among each other for the boss position they will not fight they will not fight so species diversity is maintained species diversity is maintained but as soon as the king kong is dead all the other organisms will be alert the main boss is gone so all the all the different different small small animals will fight among each other and the species diversity will come down the species diversity will then later come down so the top predator position is very important because the top predator will do what the top predator the king kong will keep the species diversity balance by showing the power i have the power i will make sure no one is fighting here for my position okay no one is fighting for my position clear this line is very difficult to understand students they have given you the line they have given you the underline here they have not teaching only the line okay so species diversity is maintained by the predator by reducing the intensity uh, they have given you sorry the, by reducing the intensity of competition among the competing prey species so the predator will make sure the competition among prey is less okay in the rocky intertidal example need pyq again need pyq again in the rocky intertidal communities of american pacific oceans the starfish what is the starfish there is a starfish starfish called as your pisaster pisaster i think i'm pronouncing it wrong but it's fine pisaster is a is an important predator so what is your boss here the boss here is your here starfish pisaster is the boss now this boss or this king kong is maintaining the balance it is maintaining the ecological uh, the species diversity balance is maintained here okay it is maintaining the balance okay in a field experiment when all the starfish what are we doing now we are removing the boss we are removing the boss in in an all starfish were removed from an enclosed intertidal area more than see what is happening when the boss is gone when the boss is gone all the small small chotu chotu gundas are fighting and what is happening what is happening see here more than 10 species of invertebrates became extinct within a year because of the inter pacific competition so the boss is gone everyone started fighting among each other so what is the main lesson here students what is the moral of the story the moral of the story here is predators will keep species diversity maintained that is the moral of the story because remember students these points are very important that is transfer of energy that is one predator will eat the plants that that is your herbivores herbivores will be eaten by carnivores carnivores will be eaten by top carnivores food chain is maintained yes then is keep prey population in check that is you like okay wait you cannot grow more keep in check then we have keeping species 
diversity maintained. Important points to be noted. One by one, I'm making you right. Okay. The next one. If a predator is too efficient, that is, your predator is like, no, I am too hungry. I am too greedy. I'll keep on eating. I'll become Kumbhakarana. I'll keep on eating. Okay. If the predator is too efficient and over exploits, it means keep on, imagine if there are 10 deer. If there are 100 deer, one tiger is like, I'm very hungry. The tiger will beat all the 100 deers. It will keep on eating all the 100 deers. It is over exploits its prey. Then the prey might become extinct. Then the prey will only become extinct. Imagine, remember the story. Remember the story of your uh, golden uh, hen. The hen which lays golden egg. If it gave golden, golden egg every single day, you would have been happy. But the man became greedy. What did the man do? Man killed the golden duck, golden uh, chicken, thinking that inside there will be so many golden eggs. That is the moral of the story was what? Moral of the story was do not become greedy. So if the, your predator, if the predator becomes too greedy, what will happen? All the prey will die. All the prey will die. Right? And following it, following it, the predators will also become extinct. Obviously, if there is no prey to it, even the predator will also eventually die from the lack of food. This is the reason why predators in nature are prudent. What is the meaning of prudent? Meaning of prudent is the predators are doing sustainable eating. What is the meaning of sustainable eating? They are keeping the future in the mind. Today I will eat one deer. After three days, I will eat another deer. They are doing proper planning. They have a roadmap. They have a roadmap for their family. That is in the future planning they are doing. They are doing future planning that one deer this week, next week one more deer. They are doing future planning. Okay. The prey species have evolved. Um, again, important. PYQs. Here also need PYQ again. <coughs> what are the questions here? The prey species have evolved various defense. Prey is like, uh, wait a minute. I will not make your life easy. Just because I'm keeping quiet, you're coming and eating me. Wait a minute. I will put an armor. I will also fight back. How is the prey fighting back now? The prey species have evolved various defenses to lessen the impact of the predators. Some species of insects and frogs are cryptically colored. That is, they completely become camouflaged. Like a uh, uh, chameleon. They will completely change their color so that predators cannot see them. They will completely become camouflaged. That is camouflaged to avoid being detected easily by the predators. Some poisonous, oh my god, some are poisonous and therefore avoided by the predators. The see, again, this is a neat PYQ here again. The monarch butterfly is highly distasteful, meaning it is blah, blah, very distasteful. Let's take your uh, uh, bitter god, Karela. Very, very, diff very difficult to eat, very distasteful, very distasteful to its predators. But why? Why are they poisonous? Because when they are young, when they are in caterpillar stage, they will eat a milky milk weed, which is poisonous in nature. Okay. High distasteful predators because of the special chemical present in its body. Interestingly, the butterfly acquires the chemical during its caterpillar stage by feeding a poisonous weed. That is, your monarch butterfly is poisonous in nature. So, your particular uh, predators will avoid. They are like, no, not today. I will not eat you today because you are very poisonous. Okay. Like how you should avoid the toxic people in your life. Do not go with them. Your predator is also avoiding the monarchy butterfly. Okay. Clear? Any doubt here, students? Students, I am telling you, every single line here, Every single line here is a neat PYQ. And I want everyone to understand these lines and don't buy hard this. Don't buy hard this and remember like, you know, because I'm telling, I'm making you read the NCRT. When you read it next time, you will understand even better. Okay. So any doubt here, students, ask me. Any doubt here? Any doubt here, ask me. I know students, you're like, sir, ecology is so boring, so much to study. Students, this is about life. You're studying about life. What is happening in the jungle? So, very important. Okay, any doubt here? Ask me. And all of you drink some water.
see your this is still not over your uh, predation, predation is still not over predation is still see you might be thinking predation is all about uh, deer and uh, deer and lion no there are so many factors in predation which you need to know okay so many factors which you know in predation for plants herbivores are predators obviously we know that for plants herbivores are the predators nearly 25 percent of the all insects also are known as your phyto phagos phytophagos that is feeding on the plant sap or other insects that is insects are eating the plants that is the problem in particular problem is particularly severe for plants because unlike animals they cannot run obviously if the deer is coming if the, deer, if the lion is coming the deer is running away but if a caterpillar, caterpillar is coming can the plants be like oh my god caterpillar is coming run now no they cannot run they cannot run here, right? Run away from the predators. Plants, therefore, has evolved. Again, need PYQ here also one. Need PYQ from here also one is there. I'll show you which is the one. Plants, therefore, has evolved an astonishingly, astonishingly variety of morphological and chemical differences against the herbivores. Now, what are these morphological ones? Morphological ones are basically thorns. Run on here. Morphological are ones basically morphological are the thorns like in cactus if you touch the cactus you'll be like oh very very uh, pricky it is very danger right in cactus as well in uh near acads acacia are the most common morphological means of thorns most morphological means of defense many plants produce and store chemicals that make uh, the herbivores sick when they are eaten. Basically, even in the case of wild, especially mushrooms, you might have seen poisonous mushroom. There are certain plants which produce certain chemicals as soon as the herbivores are eating it. As soon as the cow is eating it, the cow is like, no, my stomach upset I have now. Next time, the cow will avoid a plant. Example is your calotropis. Best example is your calotropis. Right? Uh, but they are, what happened? Sick when they eat it, or inhibiting the feeding or digestion or even reproduction or even killing it. You must have seen the weed calotropis here. Calotropis. Remember calotropis, the flower which you keep on opening. We used to play a, a game as a kids. One Raja Rani, they keep on removing one in the middle, someone used to be there. Calotropis. Growing in an abandoned fields, the plant produces highly poisonous cardiac glycosides. Very important line. This is a neat PYQ. Right, your cardiac glycosides are produced by your clarotropis. As because of that chemical nature, herbivores will not come and eat it. They're like, no, too much poison in you. And that is, and that is why you have you will never see any cattle or goats browsing on this plant. A wide variety of chemical substances that are extracted from plants are for commercial scale, which you have studied in your uh, biomolecules chapter, which you have studied. The secondary products, secondary extracts. Such as your nicotine, caffeine, quinine, and strachin, and opium, etc., are produced by them actually as a defense against the grazers and browsers. Clear? I believe they should have and you should not have any doubt here. I believe you should not have any doubt in this paragraph here. Every single line has been cleared. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. I will clear doubt. Any doubt? Ask me right now. Any doubt you can ask me. No doubt. Okay. Now, first one is done. Predation is done. So, all of you should know what are the different factors in predation, what is predation leading to, and all the examples, especially the examples. See, I made you write down the examples here. So, here one example is there your calotropis morphological. Again, here we had uh, that is camouflage and also monarchy butterfly. That is your need PYQ. Then, here we have all had the starfish. That is the main boss. Again, a need PYQ. Then we have different different factors here. All of these are very important. So every single point in your predation is important. The next one is competition. The next one is your competition. Okay. So when Darwin, so when Darwin spoke of the struggle for existence, when the Darwin spoke for struggles of struggle for existence and survival of the fittest in nature, he was convinced that the Inter-Pacific competition is potent factor, factor in 
organic evolution. So if an organism has to evolve, if an organism has to evolve, he has to undergo competition. So competition will be there. Interpacific competition will be there for organic evolution to happen, not chemical evolution. Chemical evolution is the starting one, the prebiotic soup and everything. They are talking about here organic evolution. There's Darwin's finches. Yes, that is organic evolution. So for organic evolution to happen, a competition between the two organisms is a must. Okay? Is a must. It is generally believed that competition occurs when closely related species compete for the same resource that are limited. But what is the but here? But this is not entirely true. Why? Because firstly, totally unrelated species could also compete for the same resource. For example, my, my sister and I, we will compete for same chips packet. But my friend and I, we will also compete. Even though we are not related by blood, will we compete for the same resource? The answer is yes. If my friend and I, both of us will compete for the same Cadbury or same chips packet. Okay, even we are not related. Okay, for instance, in some shallow, in, in some shallow, South American lakes visiting flamingos. Example again, eat PYQ. Students, everywhere, everywhere, every single time you have an example, one question will definitely come from there. Definitely come from there. Example here is the flamingos and the resident fishes. Are they related to each other? No. It is, it is uh, flamingos and resident fishes compete for the common food that is the zooplankton in the lake. So first example, even though the two organisms are not related, they will still fight for the same resource. Example, very important. So in your NCRT, every one of you in your NCRT, next to the example, every single time there is an example, draw one small diagram there or write down important or just mark something. Every single time there is an example to explain something, remember it is very important. Remember it is very, very important. Okay. Now, secondly, the resource need not be limiting. That is, even though, even though there are 10 chips packets, my sister and I, we will still fight who will get more. And I was understanding, the first part was, the first point was, unrelated species will also fight. And even though resource is more, still there will be a fight. Still there will be a fight. For example, if a mother is bringing 3 chips packets, I will fight with my sister and I will take two of them. She will only get one. <laughs> it is the reality. It is the reality. Okay. So I am getting two chips packet. She is getting only one chips packet. So even though resources are not limited, there will be still competition. Okay. For a comp com need not be limited for competition to occur. In inter interference competition, the feeding efficiency of one species might be reduced due to the interfering of the or inhibitory presence of the other species. This is also a neat PYQ. That is, even though, even though resources are not limited, there still will be one species will interfere with the feeding habit of the other species. I will interfere with the feeding habit of my sister. Yes, I'm interfering. That is what is happening here. That is what is happening. Even if the resources, that is the food and the space are abundant. Therefore, competition is the best defined as the process in which definition. Definition, this is the definition. Definition of competition. What is the definition here? Definition is that process in which the fitness of one species. Listen to me very carefully. Fitness of one species, that is the R value. Fitness of one species that is measured in the terms of R in the intrinsic rate of natural increase is significantly lower in the presence of other species. That is called as competition. Where if my sister and I are both a present, if her R value will go down, if, if I am present, that is called as competition. What is competition? If there are one organism A, one second organism B, if a organism is present, the B organism's R value is decreasing. That is, intrinsic rate of natural rate or the feeding habit is decreasing in the presence of A. 
that is called as competition that is called as competition what is competition i'll repeat again that is best defined as the process in which fitness of one organism fitness of one organism is fitness of one organism is significantly lower for example fitness of b is lowered in the presence of a in the presence of another species is relatively easy to demonstrate in a that is called as your that is called as your competition this is easy to explain easy to demonstrate in a laboratory experiment as as the different ex goss and other experiment ecologists did when resources are limited when the resources are limited the competitive superior species if the resources are limited the competitive superior species will flourish will eventually eliminate the other species that is i will eliminate my sister because i will take more of the i will take more of the resources okay but evidence for such competitive uh, competition exclusion occurrence in nature is not always conclusive that is in nature this type of competition can happen or cannot happen it is not very true okay it is not very true strong and persuasive circumstances evidences does not exist however in in cases the here again very important again in some cases the amingdon tortoise it's a place okay amingdon is a place amingdon tortoise in galapagos island became extinct tortoise became extinct within decade after goats were introduced on the island why because goats were eating faster goats were eating faster there was no food for your tortoise so the for the tortoise eventually got eliminated example is very important example is very important that is the superior the superior organism the organism which is able to feed more survived even though the goat and the uh, turtle or the tortoise are not related still competition was there even though grass was present a lot still competition happened and the company superior one survived other one perished okay that is apparently due to the greater browsing efficiency of the goats the other example is your the another evidence for the occurrence of competition in nature comes from what is called as your competition release very important the next point is very important what is competition release a species whose distribution is restricted to a small geography a species whose distribution is restricted to a small geographical area because of the presence of compet because of the presence of a competitively superior species is found is found to expand its distribution range is is found to expand its distribution range dramatically when the competing species is experimentally removed simple i'll tell you imagine this is one big island in this big island in this big island one species is surviving here that is species number a now now here we have this particular area is taken up by your species number b now the competitively here what does it say a species whose distribution is restricted to a smaller geographical area your a your this species number a is only in a small area species number a in a very small area why because we have a superior area because we have a superior superior organism here because we have a superior organism here right because of the presence of the competitively superior species till here it is clear is found to expand is found to expand its distribution this a this a will expand this a organism a will only expand when the organism a will only expand when the b organism is removed when the b organism if b organism is removed only then only then the only then the a organism will expand completely the a organism will expand only when the a organism will expand only when the b organism or the superior organism is removed until then the a will not move at all that is the line here that is competing species is experimentally removed example is given here 
द कोलोनियल एलिगेंट फील्ड एक्सपेरिमेंट द कर्नल सॉरी कर्नल द कर्नल एलिगेंट फील्ड एक्सपेरिमेंट शोड दैट वन रॉकी सी रॉकी सी कोस्ट ऑफ स्कॉटलैंड द लार्ज एंड द कॉम्पिटेटिव सुपीरियर बार्निकल वी हैव इन दिस पर्टिकुलर फील्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर फील्ड वी हैव अ बार्निकल इमेजिन वी हैव अ कॉम्पिटेटिवली सुपीरियर बार्निकल इज दर दिस इज द कॉम्पिटेटिवली सुपीरियर बार्निकल सुपीरियर बार्निकल दैट इज योर बलानस डॉमिनेट इज द इंटर टाइडल रीजन सो वी हैव द बलानस हियर वी हैव द बलानस हु इज कंप्लीटली कवरिंग द एंटायर स्पेस बलानस इज कवरिंग द एंटायर एरिया इट इज लाइक सुपीरियर आम द बॉस हियर ओके बार्निकल दैट इज डॉमिनेट इज द इंटर टाइडल एरिया एंड एक्सक्लूड द स्मॉलर बार्निकल सो वी हैव स्मॉलर बार्निकल इन द कॉर्नर इन दिस कॉर्नर हियर In this corner, we have a small area for one species number B. Species we have one more one, which is the smaller one is the they have given here, right? Yes, smaller barnacle that is your Catmalus. Catmalus is there in the smaller area. Larger area is your Banas here from the zone. In general, the herbivorous plants appear to be more adversely affected by the competition than the carnivores. Again, very important line here. Now, this part I explained left it as such. Okay, students, listen to here. Listen to me very carefully here. We have in this larger area, we have one species of barnacle. In this small area, we have one more type of barnacle. Now, only way, the only way this barnacle will expand everywhere. How will it expand? Only when Barnus is completely removed. Only if the barnus is completely removed, then only your the other barnacle will completely expand. Until then, it cannot expand. It will only stay in a smaller area. It will stay in a smaller area. Okay. Clear? I hope clear. It is clear. The only way this barnacle will expand only when the other barnacle, the superior barnacle, will come down. Until then, the small barnacle will remain small. In small population, the large population will be dominated by the bananas. Will be controlled by your bananas. Balnus, balnus. Okay, this is your entire. Here, this is right here. Can you see this line? This also line is a neat PYQ. Here, this line here is also a neat previous year question. Okay, next one. Ah. Uh, Again, very important. Write down. Very important. That is your Gauss ex competitive exclusion principle. Gauss is competitive competitive exclusion principle. What does it say? It says that two species who are competing for the same resource, one species which is more superior will dominate, and the other species which is not able to compete will eventually die. says that two closely related species for example me and my sister two completely related species competing for the same resource cannot coexist ind indefinitely and competitively inferior competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually this may be true if resources are limited only if the resources are limited this is true okay but not otherwise more recent studies do not support they are like no no we will not support you most recent studies are most recent studies do not support such gross generalization about the competition while they do not rule out the occurrence of the interspecific competition in the nature they are like we completely do not agree with you but also we cannot completely disregard also because there can be some instances where competition can happen okay competition can happen clear Com inter pacific pointed out facing uh, they point uh, they point out that species facing competition might evolve mechanisms obviously one species which is facing extinction they are like will they keep quiet will they keep quiet and get perish no they will fight back right they will show they like no i want to survive that is they point out that they point out that the species competing might evolve mechanisms that promote 
coexistence rather than the exclusion for example instead of getting one chips packet if my mother will get two chips packet one for me one for my sister both of us will survive aram se both of us will both of us will enjoy the chips packet that is both of us will coexist we do not have to fight anymore we do not have to fight anymore clear that is the answer once one such mechanism is called as resource partitioning that is we are splitting the resources we are splitting the resources now <clears throat> if two species compete for the same resource they could avoid competition by choosing for instance different times for feeding one can feed in the morning one can feed in the night same same uh, same from the same tree or different forage patterns that is in darwin's finches one finch is eating insect the other finch is eating nuts the other finch is eating birds the other other finch other finch is eating the other insects the other finch, finch is eating different type of fruit the forage pattern the eating pattern can change so all the other finches the darwin finches are able to survive together okay macarthur showed that five closely related species of warbles living on the same tree were able to avoid competition and coexist due to the together because of the different feeding patterns clear because of different feeding patterns <clears throat> now can anyone solve this question now let's see the question here what is the question the question says that statement number one gauss exclusively exclude gauss complete exclusion principle states that the two closely related species competing for the same resource cannot coexist indefinitely and competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually now one statement second statement is in general carnivores are more adversely affected by the competition than the herbivores second statement is saying you second statement is telling you carnivores are more affected by the herbivores is it true see here we just learned the second line here here in general herbivores are plants appear to be more adversely affected than carnivores so is the second statement true no see every line of ncrt every line of ncrt question can come this is also need pyq this is also a need pyq so statement number one is correct statement number two is false because we know because plants cannot run plants cannot survive easily they cannot run away so plants are affected more by competition compared to animals compared to animals clear so this is the answer next question again 10 species of invertebrates became extinct within a year when all the uh, starfish were removed from the enclosed inter, uh, enclosed internal region true starfish is the important predator starfish is the main boss here which reduces the intensity of competition among the invertebrates obviously assertion is true reason is true and the reason is that the main boss is making sure the competition is not happening within the prey so answer is a answer is a next question again need pyq some species of insects and frogs are cryptically colored that is camouflaged to avoid being detected by the predators true monarch butterfly develops a special chemical in its body by feeding the poisonous weed at a caterpillar stage that is it is taking a milkweed that is also correct now tell me but is this statement monarchy butterfly statement is it explaining the camouflage nature of insects and frogs no both statements are correct but it is not explaining the other one so option number b that is a and r are true but r is not correct explanation of a clear easy questions next chapter and next uh, cha next chapter will be doing the diversity and conservation conservation chapter the last chapter from this ecology after that ecology is over after that ecology is completely over after that ecology after ecology i'm taking principles and inheritance principles in terms of variation okay principles chapter i'm taking okay after this we will do last part chapter of your ecology we will we'll finish that also after that we'll do principles and inheritance of variation 
आफ्टर दैट विल बी डूइंग बायोटेक क्लियर ना नेक्स्ट वन इज पैरासाइटिसम सी स्टूडेंट्स प्रोडेशन इज ओवर एंड कॉम्पिटिशन इज ओवर द टू मेन फैक्टर्स आर ओवर नाउ वी आर लेफ्ट विथ पैरासाइटिसम अगेन parasitism is also equally important we learn a lot of points here so i want everyone to focus very clearly now and this parasitism is equally important for your boards as well as neat because i'm telling you every single where when neat question can come from so are you ready can we start can we start the parasitism now can we start parasitism now now <clears throat> what is a parasite parasite is a type of organism which feeds on other organism without killing it that is very important if the parasite kills the host can it derive the nutrition from the host no so a parasite will never kill the host it will only affect the host 90% of the times okay and that mode of nutrition is called as parasitism that mode of nutrition is called as parasitism considering that the parasitic mode of life ensures the free lodging that is they are getting free space to survive free space they are getting and free meals they are getting nice food food also there yes it is not surprise that the parasitism has evolved in so many taxonomic groups from plants so in the case of plants also we have parasites that is your cascuta and into higher vertebrates in higher vertebrates also we have so many different types of parasites many parasites have evolved to be host specific some parasites are like your um, certain type of people who will only come to you when you have money imagine if you don't have money that person will never come near you they will not be with you only when you have money they will come near you they will be like buy me this buy me that okay they will only be nice to you when you have money that is called as host specific here this organisms are so specific they are like you know for this organism only this will affect okay they are very choosy very choosy many parasites have evolved to be host specific they can they they can parasitize only a single species of host in such way that in a such a way that both host and parasite tend to co evolve now what is this co evolve in this case of co evolution the host the host is finding different ways to not get infected it is finding what it is finding different ways different ways not to get infected but the parasite the parasite the parasite is forming it is finding different ways to different ways to different ways to infect so the host is like the host is like i'm i'm filed different different ways in which i'll not get infected but the parasite is like parasite is like no wait a minute you evolve i'll also evolve if you find if you make this particular shield i will come with a sword if you make a house i will come with a bulldozer and break the house are you noticing so both the organism that is host and parasite are evolving together they are evolving together here okay co evolution that is if the host evolves special mechanism for rejection here different mechanism for rejection or resist the parasite the parasite has to evolve mechanism to counter the and neutralize the them so if they they will form counter measures okay parasite will form countermeasures in order to be successful with the same host species in in accordance with their lifestyle parasite evolved special adaptations such the such as loss of unnecessary sense organs obviously will they need sense organs anymore because they are getting the food free food there imagine if your friend is buying you treat will you take your money with that day no you will keep your wallet in the house if your friend is giving you treat we will not even open your wallet you not even open your gp they like no that is what is happening if the parasite is obtaining all the nutrition from the host will the parasite need to have sensory organs no 
सेंसर ऑन से रिमूव्ड प्रेजेंस ऑफ अधेसिव ऑर्गन्स और सकर्स टू क्लेंच ऑन टू द होस्ट दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज़ इट नीड्स टू बी होल्डिंग ऑन द होल्डिंग ऑन टू द होस्ट लॉस ऑफ डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम एंड हाई रिप्रोडक्टिव कैपेसिटी द ओनली थिंग दैट पैरासाइट हैज टू डू इज टेक द न्यूट्रिशन फ्रॉम द होस्ट एंड keep on reproducing after year after year okay the life cycle the life cycle of the parasite are often complex very complex because they can have one host or they can have many host true right involves one or two intermediate host or vector they can have intermediate host or vector both are different both are very different host and vector are both are different i'll tell you why i'll tell you why to facilitate the parasitism of to facilitate parasitization of its primary host the human liver fluke example need me by q important the human liver fluke a nematode at a at a, a trematode parasite depends on the two intermediate host a snail and a fish to complete its life cycle so in the case of your liver fluke there are two different intermediates which one is your one is your snail the other one is your fish in animal kingdom you learn this in animal kingdom you will learn this okay the malaria again the malaria parasite needs a vector here the malaria needs a vector here not a host because it is not completing its life cycle inside the Ma inside the uh, female alpha's mosquito, it is only a vector here. It is not completing its life cycle there. Okay, vector mosquito to spread the other spread to the other host. Majority of the parasites harm the host. They may they may reduce the reduce the survival, growth, and reproduction of the host and reduce and reduce the and uh, also reduce the population density. They might render the host. more vulnerable to predators by making the physically weak you know right when you we get malaria the entire body becomes weak completely weak so they can make the host completely weak or they can even kill the kill the host in extreme conditions okay that here one question can come from here question can come from here apart from that nothing will come here okay now there are two type of parasites in total there are two type of parasites one parasite will be on the outside skin like ectoparasite the other will be inside your body inside the body is called as your endoparasite outside is called as what ectoparasite within the body is called as endoparasite see here parasites that feed on the external surface of the host organism is called as ectoparasite the most familiar example of this group are lice is the lice that is in the hair in the hair will be the lice lice in the case of humans lice on humans and ticks on the dogs many marine fishes are infected with the ectoparasites other example is your marine are ectoparasites that is copepods copepods can be there the cascuta is a plant plant based parasite cascuta a parasitic plant is commonly found in the growing of hedge plants hedge plants are the plants which grows on the corner on the hedge plants you can find the cascuta growing there on top of it okay external okay has lost its chlorophyll very important obviously if the cascuta is taking nutrition from the host why does it need chlorophyll it doesn't need chlorophyll it is a chlorophyll gone completely gone chlorophyll is completely gone here okay and leaves in the course of evolution it derives its nutrition from the host plant which is which is it parasites the female the female mosquito anopheles mosquito is not considered as a parasite although it needs our blood because it is a vector because it is not life sign is not completed there okay the next one is your endoparasite that is in contrast the endoparasites are those that live inside the host they are like no i will not be on your surface i will be inside your body you will find them inside your body of the organism that is endoparasites example is your liver fluke in kidney lungs and also red blood cells that is your plasmodium plasmodium vivax in the case of red blood cells clear the life cycle of the endoparasites are more complex because of their 
extreme specialization the morphological and anatomical features are greatly simplified why simplified because they do not have to you know work so much everything is simple for them all they need to do is derive the nutrition from the host and emphasize their emphasize their reproductive potential the reproductive potential will go very high everything else will be very simple sada okay ha huh. again very important there is something called as brood parasitism now what is brood parasitism so listen to the small story there are two birds one is a coel other one is a crow coel will never make its nest crow will make the nest when the crow is making the nest imagine the this is the crow's nest in this crow's nest the eagle not eagle something eagle the coel imagine this is the crow's egg all of these are crow's egg now what will the coel do coel will quietly come coel will quietly come and it will lay its egg inside the crow's nest the coel will never make its nest the coel will come and it will lay its egg inside the crow's nest and the crow is so stupid it will not even realize it will not even realize right and what will happen eventually the eggs will hatch eventually the eggs will hatch and the coel bird coel the coel small chick will actually derive all the nutrition which the mud crow is bringing and it will kill the other crows it will kill the other crows also that is the sad story here here brood parasitism in birds is a fascinating example of parasitism in which the parasite that is your coel bird lays the eggs in the nest of the host which is the host here host is the crow here host is the crow here and let the host incubate them that is the crow is completely incubating them during the course of the evolution the eggs of the parasitic bird have evolved eggs of the parasitic bird that is your coel's bird eggs have evolved to resemble the host egg so you, you here i've drawn different different color but in reality in reality they will not be different color they will look exactly alike you cannot tell which is crow's egg which is your coel egg you cannot differentiate at all they look very very same but they are different in size and color to reduce the chance of host the bird det detecting the foreign eggs and rejecting them from the nest now try to follow the this is not important that's all that is the example here that is the example called as brood parasitism for coel and crow that is done now fourth one is your commensalism i know students this could be your like sir you're like so you're explaining so much information how will we remember so much information the only way to remember so much information is the reading ncrt at least two to three, two to three times this chapter has a lot of examples lot of examples lot of theory so only way to remember such theory and examples read ncrt make your own notes learn with the help of mind map and the mind map also i'll be doing later on mind map also i'll be doing later on okay exactly this is your ncrt line by line every line of ncrt i'm explaining to you okay any doubt till here i can ask me students any doubt till here in the predation first one then we learned about computation then we learned about your parasitism any doubt in these three you can ask me because we are left with only few of them okay any doubt you can ask me here why am i looking so bright today oh my god i just saw my face i'm looking so bright the next one is your commensalism commensalism are the good people commensalism are the good people they are like i don't want anything in return i will only help you out commensalism is like our channel we do not want anything in return we will only help you in your preparation these are the good people okay it is the interaction in which one species benefits and the other is neither harmed nor benefited clear in this condition if one species is getting benefited the other species is like no i don't want anything in return i am okay on my own examples are very important 
let's look at the examples now let's look at the examples here the first one is your an orchid first example is here an orchid growing as a epiphyte on the mango branch now what is an epiphyte epiphyte is a type of plant which grows on other plant okay the epiphyte here is the orchid so orchid is growing on the mango plant does the mango tree does it have a problem no mango tree is like you can keep on growing i do not have a problem with you okay and other example is your barnacles second one is your second example is here barnacles growing on the back of the whale benefit from the benefit while the while while neither the mango tree nor the whale derive any apparent benefit so a barnacle which is growing on the whale whale is not benefited nor harmed but the barnacle barnacle is getting a shelter so barnacle is benefited second example for commensalism third example is here third example is the cattle er, the cattle ergret have you seen ergret ergret or ergret ergret is a type of white color bird which will be sitting on top of buffalo you might have noticed on top of the buffalo it will be waiting it will be sitting now as soon as the buffalo is moving as soon as the cow is moving uh, when the cow is moving it will scatter the grass as soon as the grass is moving insects are flying out when the insects are flying out this bird is sitting on top it will take its beak eat the insect as the cow is moving the grass is moving insects are coming out the bird white bird will eat the insect that is your example here the cattle aggregate the and the grazing cattle is a close association a significant a, a site you might have seen in the you catch if you are in the rural areas is a classic example of commensalism the aggregate always for a uh, forage close to where the cattle are grazing because why the cattle as they move as the cattle is moving they stir up the and flush out the insects from the uh, vegetation as soon as the insects are coming out the aggregate is eating the insects aggregate is eating the insects here okay another otherwise might be difficult for the aggregate to find on the other one the other example of commensalism fourth one the other example of commensalism is the interaction between the sea anemone sea anemone is the tentacles like tentacles like um, structure underwater in the sea you can see underwater plant like sea anemone not plants an animal sorry underwater animal like uh, tentacles will be there sea anemone that has stinging tentacles and a clownfish Clown, clownfish you might have seen finding nemo in the finding nemo that is a clownfish the clownfish will find a shelter inside the tentacles the sea anemone is not benefited but the clownfish clownfish is benefited that is protection that is the fourth example here the fish gets the protection from the predators which stay away from the stinging tentacles the sea anemone does not appear to derive any form of benefit by hosting the clownfish all the four examples very important for a neat examination as well as board examination okay all the four are very important uh i'll be teaching plant kingdom after 19th right now let's finish let's finish all the class 12th portions because board exam is close by since board exam is close by let's finish all the class 12th now high weightage class 12th after that we will do plant kingdom and the first chapter of your class 11th that is your living world i've not done right i'll do that also later on plant kingdom also i'll do later on okay 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 finding dory also yes in finding dory also you can see that so students all the four are very important here clear students are you understanding all of these concepts are very important they are important for your board examination or neat examination and remember plan kingdom i will write everything plan kingdom i'll write and explain this is for since this is i'm doing ncrtc there are two type of classes one is ncrt line by line the other one is your writing so plan kingdom i will write and explain because i have to draw the cycles i have to draw the cycles plan kingdom will entire chapter i will write and i'll, I'll draw the cycles and explain you okay yeah so shreya sir is kept to not me for me i have to find a different name for me i have to find a different name 
सो दैट इज योर म्यूचुअलिज्म सो दैट इज योर कमेंसलिज्म डन कमेंसलिज्म डन इंडस्टेड एनी डाउट इन कमेंसलिज्म इन एनी ऑफ द फोर एग्जांपल्स यू कैन आस्क मी राइट नाउ एनी डाउट नो डाउट देन विल डू म्यूचुअलिज्म द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर आई एम सो ग्लैड दैट सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आर स्टिल फ्रॉम स्टार्टिंग from starting till now you are watching from past 3 hours from past 3 hours we are doing this chapter that is we are reading ncert line students trust me if you sit on your own and read the ncert line you can finish in less amount of time but you will miss one or two line you will miss out that is why i am doing this ncert line by line after this particular class you should be able to tell i know every line of this chapter okay so after this class you should know every line of this chapter okay now then we do mutualism that is mutual agreement we have a deal all of us have a deal right i will teach i will teach you all you need to do is like the video and in today's comments in today's comments i need to i need to know that how was the class it was the class was good or did you not understand anything let me know in the today's comments today's to today's video if you have any doubt also because i might have missed some doubts okay now next is mutualism this interaction confers benefits for both interacting species that is both the species are benefited here that is you are watching the session you are benefited i am getting the likes and comments i am also happy i am also happy okay lichens the famous example the first one lichens that is the relationship between a fungus as well as a algae algae will do photosynthesis the fungus will provide shelter lichens relationship between your fungus and the photosynthetic and the fungus and algae or the cyanobacteria the second example is here the second example is between your mycorrhizae association between the fungus as well as the higher plants now what is happening here fungus is providing nutrients and fungus is providing nutrients and fungus is making sure the plants is able to absorb the nutrients from the soil and what is plants providing plants are providing shelter as well as carbon carbohydrates the fungus helps the plants to absorption of the essential nutrients from the soil while the plants in turn provide the fungi the energy yielding carbohydrates done dusted the next one you see now that is the second example that is the second example first one done second one done the third example you see here now students the reason i'm coming so close here is because can you see some light coming here in the corner if i stand here i cannot even see any word on the board if i stand here i you can see but i cannot see so that is why i have to come close by to see the because this studio there is so much of light i cannot see what is written here okay the most spectacular and evolutionary fascinating example heavy english the most spectacular and evolutionary fascinating example of mutualism are found in plant animal relationships so where do you find the most spectacular and evolutionary relationships plant and animal let's look at them plants need the help of animals for pollination pollinating their flowers and dispersal of their seeds third example what is the third example third example is the insects doing pollination clear obviously a uh, third example the flower and dispersal of the seed the animals obviously will have to be paid fees that is the animals will be like i will not do your work for free i want something in return i am teaching here i am asking for your likes and comments and the views because everyone should get benefit from free education that is our goal so even in the case of animals animals are like no i will be like i need something in return i will not do your work for free so your particular animals are some getting something in return that is your nectar or fees that is fees paid or the service that plants expect from them that service for that the plants expect from them plants offer rewards or fee in the form of pollen and nectar so plants are giving what plants are like no take this nectar take this nectar and do pollination for me so plants are giving nectar and plants are doing animals are doing the work 
for pollination and juicy and nutrients fruits also for seed dispersal but mutually benefited system should also be safeguarded from against the cheaters imagine there's one deal here we have a deal one plant and one animal have a deal but one third party will come now or cheater will come like a spammer spammer or cheater will come but what he will do he will not benefit he will cheat and he will take the reward and he will go back he will not do any work a cheater is the one who will come who will take the reward and he will go back he will not do any work that is cheater for example animals that try to steal nectar without doing the pollination the cheaters very common cheaters the spammers also they do not want to learn here they will not learn here they will spam and they will go cheaters are spammers now you can see why plant and animal interactions can often involve coevolution for the mutualism this is this in this evolution of the flower and its pollinators species are tightly linked with each other that is one particular plant and one particular insect will evolve together okay in many species of fig very important example in many species of fig and an insect larvae so what will what will happen the insect will come and lay its egg inside can you see insect will come and fig and wasp if the wasp will come and lay its egg inside the fig the wasp will come and it will lay the eggs inside the fig now what is the benefit the first benefit for the fig fig will uh, a fig because of this uh, because the wasp is coming and sitting and laying the eggs pollination is also happening the same wasp will go somewhere else to find laying eggs so pollination is happening but what is wasp getting in return wasp is getting in return the place to lay the eggs point number one the second benefit for the wasp is the second benefit is the larvae will actually take the nutrition from the fruit from the fruit larvae will take the nutrients so wasp is getting two different benefit that is first one is place to lay the eggs the second one is nutrition from the larvae now what is the fig getting in return the fig is getting the fig is getting pollinated the fig is getting pollinated see here the species are tightly linked with one another in many species species of fig there is a tight species of relationship there is a tight one to one relationship with a pollinator the species of wasp it means that a given fig species can be pollinated by only its partner wasp species and no other species the female wasp uses the fruit what is the advantage the female wasp uses the fruit not only to that is ov position not only to lay eggs but also uses the developing seeds within its fruit for the nourishing the larvae its larvae the wasp pollinates the fig inflorescence while searching for the suitable egg that is the benefit this is the benefit for the fig that is pollination is happening in return for the play favor of the pollination of the fig often offers the wasp some amount of developing seeds as food for developing wasp larvae so larvae is also getting benefited here wasp is getting benefited fig is also getting benefited both are happy happy both are happily married <laughs> but there is one condition this there is something called as sexual deceit that is fake fakeness is happening pseudo copulation is happening that is seen in the case of orchids that is seen in the case of orchids now what is happening in the case of orchids orchids show a bewildering diversity of flora patterns patterns many of which have evolved to attract the right pollinator insect so what is happening i'll tell you see here this is an orchid this orchid will look exactly like a female honeybee now what will happen now this bee this bee is thinking there's a female bee sitting here it will come and try to copulate with it the same bee will go somewhere else and try to copulate with some other flower thinking that it is a female bee but it is actually the flower the flower here will look like a female bee that is shape shifter the bee here is a shape shifter it will look exactly like a female bee but when the female the male bee is coming and pseudo copulating the same bee is going somewhere else what is happening 
ट्रांसफर ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन इज है पोलिनेशन इज हैपनिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड सूडो कॉपुलेशन और योर सेक्शुअल डिसीट दैट इज बी और बंबल बी एंश्योर नॉट ऑल ऑर्किड्स ऑफर रिवॉर्ड्स सम मेडिटेरियन ऑर्किड्स कॉल्ड एज ऑफ्राइस ऑफ्राइस employs sexual defeat sexual deceit to get pollination done by the species of the bee one very important here see this very important one petal of this one petal of its flower be un be one petal of the flower be an uncanny resemblance to the female bee of the same size so one petal will look like a honey bee other female honey bee okay size color and marking the male bee is attracted to the what is what what the male bee will like oh female bee is here i will go and pseudo copulate i will go copulate with it what it perceives as a female bee pseudo copulates with the flower and during that process this dusted with the pollen and from the flower when the same bee pseudo copulates with the other flower it transfers the pollen and thus the pollination is completed and the pollination is completed here and here you can see how they co evolve they are co evolving even if the wasp even even if the orchid will look something different will the will the bumblebee and come and sit here no so it is they are co evolving now this was one of the questions which i still can't i can't still can't answer how did the orchid know what bee looks like right how did how did even the orchid know that this is how the female bee looks like does the orchid have eyes no if you know the answer let me in the comment section because even i don't know i have tried to search it i did have an answer i forgot the answer right now but if you know the answer to the question let me know in the comment section how did the orchid even know that how does the female bee looks like if you know the answer let me know in the comment section okay the pollinates the flower here you can see how the co evolution operates if the female bee color pattern changes even slightly for a reason during the evolution the pollination success will be obviously be reduced unless the orchid also coevolves to maintain the resemblance of its petal to the female bee very fascinating example very fascinating this is very fascinating right that is the end of the chapter before we end the chapter let's see the some questions the question here is plants offer reward to animals in the form of pollen and nectar and animal facilitates the pollination process this type can be seen where obviously this can be seen in your mutualism that is reward mechanism is seen in the mutualism next question the cattle aggregate and grazing cattle show commensalism true reason the aggregate catches those insects which are found due to the cattle grazing true so what is the answer here both a and r are true and a is the reason is the correct explanation of the assertion now let's read a summary can we read a summary that is the end of the chapter every single line of insight has been covered now i will read a summary all of you just listen to me i will read a summary just listen to me the chapter is over okay i know everyone is reading for maths everyone is reading for maths that's why students are less little but it's fine everyone can watch it later on let's read a summary now let's read a summary ready <coughs> let me drink some water and read it let me drink some water ah as a branch of biology ecology is the study of relationships of living organisms with abiotic that is physical chemical factors and biotic components that is your other species of an environment in the environment it is concerned with four levels of biological organization what are the four main levels the four main levels is the organisms population communities and as well as biomes did you did you write down down yes we wrote down that then evolutionary changes through the natural selection i'll send here and read evolutionary changes through natural selection takes place at a population level 
very important line and hence population ecology is an important area of ecology true a population is a group of individuals same individuals of a given species sharing or competing for a similar resource in a defined geographical area that is a population definition all of you population have attributes that individual organisms do not so population will have attributes individual will not have attributes okay that is birth rate and death rate and sex ratio and change of distribution that is age distribution a, pro, a portion of different age groups of male and female in a population is often represented by what often represented by one second check 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 it's clear here you can hear me right that is a population of an individual of a given species area sharing or competing then right a portion of different age group of males and females in a population is often represented by graphically by a age pyramid that is your age pyramid that is your age pyramid three types that is whether the portion uh, population is stationary growing or in decline growing is your exponential pyramid that is that is your exponential one or stable stable one is your bell shape is your stable one and there is a declining one that is orange shape is a declining one next ecological effects of a factor ecological effects for any factors of a, on a population are generally reflected in its size obviously size of a size will of a population will uh, affect its ecology okay population density we explain the population density which may be expressed in different ways that is population density can be expressed in the terms of number biomass percent converted example and numbers is very important sometimes numbers cannot be implemented that time biomass is implemented example is your bacteria okay population growth populations grow through birth and immigration and decline through death and emigration when the resources are unlimited the growth is usually exponential that is your exponential or geometric growth which is j shaped curve but when the resources become progressively limited that is your logistic growth sigmoid curve the growth pattern turns logistic in either case growth is unlimited unlimitedly limited by a carrying capacity of the environment the intrinsic rate of natural increase r is a measure of the inheritance potency of a population to grow that is r r is very important remember then in nature population of different species inhabited do not live in isolation but interact in many ways many species will interact among each other depending upon the outcomes these interactions between the two species are classified as competition when both species suffer predation and parasitism one benefit other one is harmed commensalism one is benefited other one is not harmed not benefited commensalism then we have amensalism in amensalism one is benefit see amensalism is written in the summary amensalism is written in the summary but not given evils amensalism one is harmed the other one is unaffected and the mutualism where both are benefited predation is a very important important process through which the tropic energy i told you four points tropic very important points here predation through which tropic energy transfer is facilitated facilitated and the some predators help in controlling the prey did you write down all these points yes sir we wrote all these points first point of predation is transferring energy second point is controlling the prey the third one was maintaining the species diversity population plants have evolved diverse morphological and chemical differences against the herbivores in competition it is presumed that the superior superior competitor el el eliminates the inferior one competitive exclusive principle that is gauss principle but many closely related species have evolved various mechanism to coexist that is called coevolution which facilitates their coexistence some of the most fascinating cases of mutualism in nature are seen in plant pollinator interactions that is your wasp and fig is the major example which is given in your ncrt that is the 
end of the chapter before i go on the end of the chapter let me tell you some important links which is important for you so you you are a neat aspirant you are inter interconnected to us so for your benefit i am giving you so many links if you go to the description right now if you go to the description right now you will find so many links so many links which will help you in your preparation for example there is a let me show you let me show you these are my notes these are my notes where is the link It's gone here. It's came. See, since you are also related to us, we have done everything for you. See here. If you are a description right now, this thing was magic toolkit. All of you know what is magic toolkit, right? All of you know what is magic toolkit. See here. I should put an OTP here. See, I have already done it. I have already done it, so you can also do this. See here. Year wise, every single need previous question, year wise, there is given and also code wise. Even very difficult to get code wise. Year wise, you can get, but code wise, very difficult to get. Every single year, code wise paper is given that is in your magic kit. Oh, see, did you see how I obtained it? All I had to do was, <clears throat> all I had to do was click and log in. Then we have treasure box. All of you know treasure box already. That is, every single session is given here. Need PYQ is given here. CBSE questions are given here. See, this is important for your CBSE questions. Previous year CBSE questions are given here. And if you're if you are a CBSE student, you're writing board examination. This is going to be very important for you. So every single, see here, NCERT solution. Every single chapter NCERT solution is given here. In a treasure box. In a treasure box, there is again PYQs also is given here. See here, see PYQ Plant Kingdom. PYQ Plan Kingdom. Every single thing is given. Then we have Learning Center. I already told you about Vedant Learning Center. If with, <coughs> if the Vedant, <coughs> oh my God, voice is gone. If the Vedant Center is near you, please join it. Trust me, at that price, everything what they're doing is so interactive. It could be the smart clickers, or it could be the doubt solving, or it could be mentorship. Everything is top notch. That is a Learning Center. Then Telegram, then notes. See, this is not updated right now. Later on, once the chapter is over, this will be updated here. Notes will be updated here. Then we have PDF need need PYQ questions here. After this video, after this today's video, I want everyone to go and solve these questions. Solve these questions. You can solve. See, abmensalism, commensalism. So many questions are here. So many questions are here. And if you are CB students. This is for CB students. This is for organism and population. CBSE questions. Can you see? Five mark question, six mark question. Every single chapter wise questions are given. What else do you need? CBSE most repeated questions are also given here. All you need to do is click on it and use it. And if you think everything is done, PYQ done. If you want to take a test, you can take a test also. Can you see? PYQ test. Start test. Afterwards, it is okay. I, I no non-student. See, I am a teacher, so I can't at, enter this test. If you are a student, you can enter this test and please attend the test also. Every single concept which you learn today, if you write the test, memory recall will happen. So write the test also. See, so many things are here, and your NCD solutions. Every single thing which you need for your preparation, be it be a board examination, it could be a CBS examination. Every single information is given here. So please make it useful and take advantage of all this take advantage of all of this so with that being said thank you so much students i hope this chapter was useful to you yes this chapter was useful to you and i'll see you in my next class which is going to be your last chapter of your ecology so until then bye bye take care all of you